go on and on and on and go take them to the crib unless they're boning. Uh, easy, call them on the phone and back to Chanel Cologne. All right, welcome to Straight Riffin. I'm your host, Reverend Mitch, and off to the left is my co host, Justin Dubois. Hello. Uh, and off to the right is the lovely Aiden Starr. Hi there. It's been forever in a hundred years. I've got a kitty. And and she's petting Bushka. Always <laughs> good. Always good. Yeah, rub the pussy. Yeah, He's that's so good. Cute. So Look what the fuck is up? Too. How have you been? You've uh, it's good. been way too long. Um, I was making fun of you guys for living in Hollywood still. <laughs> yeah. I've moved on to Echo Park, but you still live here. To be fair, Justin doesn't live in Hollywood. Yeah, Where I do you don't. live? It's not so much a you guys. I, I live right? in East L.A. So I is was that Echo Park? Born no. In East LA. What's East L.A. technically? Um, you don't want to go there. It's it's actually like your, your particular neighborhood seems fine. I'll say that. I mean, oh yeah, yeah. No, I tell people it's the yuppiest part of East LA <laughs> ever. It's very clean. Like Williamsburg. Yeah, a lot of gays and Asians. Very clean. You go pretty east and then it becomes suburbia. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you're out in Echo Park of all <laughs> things, huh? Yeah, I like it there. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> Fuck you, Mitch. <laughs> Shut, look, Echo I Park. <laughs> Everyone wears American Apparel there. That's that's just yeah. like. I know, Gus. Yeah. What? So what I, kind of, what like, kind of certain... clothes are you wearing that are better than American Apparel? No, I'm just saying you just know where they're from. Wow. And it's like she's really like she's she's <laughs> committed to Echo Park. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone you, looks you like they just walked say, off. You can't even say American it. Apparel without her. She's like, oh, hold on, hold on. wait a minute. What are we? What are you saying here? No, it's just everyone's well, very lean and fit. Douchebag Incorporated jewelry you got right there. Is that what the label for it is? Yeah, actually, it's yes. It's made by douchebags douche for douchebags. Incorporated. Bags. Yes. You, you haven't seen the commercials? Yeah. It's like it's it's backlit Play black and me. white, yeah. and then there's the douchebag. Yes. <laughs> and then the girl like <laughs> off to the side, and she goes, "What is that?" And the guy just walks in, douchebag. That's right. You know. That's he what does we call it. the guy who drives the Porsche. In my and building. at the end of the commercial, he's all, "Hey, because <laughs> why do you fucking before drive you go, Porsche, did you get your tickets park. to the gun show?" <laughs> you know. God. And she's like, oh, "Douchebag." No. Yes. I just poured beer on myself because I'm don't not pour tired. beer on yourself. I did it. Don't do that. Oh, I just flick it in my, <laughs> it in my face. Wow, hardcore man. Good. I'm gonna rub it in. Do it. Yeah, go for it. That's why we're black. Yeah, that's the same way I, I am. I can be a fucking slob. It's like it's not. It's not because I'm gothic. No, it's because I don't want to have. Because I'm a fucking shit. slob. Yeah, get slobby. Fuck it. Doesn't yeah. matter. I work because I'm blah. Well, never mind. Because you're blah. <laughs> you're about to say you're, you're blah. Because I feel like a what? Because I'm usually fat and I just feel like a fat piece of piece of shit. Oh, just like, like you're using blob. it for the I slimming quality. Yeah, oh, I usually. Gotcha. Says <laughs> says the guy who goes to the gym more than no, or at I least don't. Works out rather. I got a personal trainer. Oh, nice. did you? I did. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna be 32, so. Oh. I feel like Welcome I want to. the club. Yeah, I feel like I want to slim it down a little bit. Maybe I don't know. Well, you look good. It's good. Thanks. It's just good to probably get be healthy. Like whatever. yeah, the exercise and healthy and stuff. I, I guess that's what they're telling me is in your. I 30s. think the guy might be really amusing too. Like I called to make the appointment and he sounded like uh, the personal trainer from the Iron Man commercials. You know where he says, I, "Iron Man trains in my gym sometime." Awesome. And he says, awesome, awesome, over and over again. So I kind of just want to <laughs> hear him say awesome over and over again and giggle at him. Well, that's that's really what you need a trainer for anyway. So all that I can giggle? Shit. Yeah, just, yeah, just to giggle. For amusement? It's really, yeah. It's all about the giggling and the amusement. All the other shit you could take or leave. The working out, the running, the jumping jacks. That's... Jumping jacks. <laughs> I don't know what they. Is that what they're going to make me do? The last time you worked out, you did jumping jacks. Can you tell I don't go to the gym? Okay, I think that Mitch <laughs> just watches girls do jumping jacks because it's like a tip bouncer sort of activity. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm sure my personal training will consist of a lot of jumping jacks. Last time Mitch you, if, out. You, if you do jumping jacks, you'll come home and like just just your face all bruised up. And you'll be like, I can't see anything. I was jumping jack. Pretty much. I'll just wear some ace bandage over my tits to the gym tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, three sports bras, that things works. like that. Yeah. Strap them into place. I hear you. Well, that's probably that's kind of your only option, I guess, at that point. Well, or I don't, I don't like have really bad. Pain. My moves have not gotten large enough to worry about yet. My your fucking moves. moves are huge. See, that's the thing. That's uh, I was actually talking to someone about this the other day. They're like, I know that you gain weight. I'm like, how can you tell? They're like, because your tits are a double D, and you're Italian, and your at your tits go your weight goes to your tits and your hips, and I just like fucking curved out. That's why I need to go to the gym because. Eventually. I don't see as that's a bad thing. No, yeah, eventually I'll get like either. the Nana, like fucking, you know, like Nana's got real big tits and they get like the bras, like do the 
the divot into their shoulders. Oh, and okay. then I get the fucking Nana divot in my shoulders. And Are you wearing a bikini power. top as a bra? No, it's my, it, I think I got oh. it at American Apparel, actually. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's my bra. It doesn't, it's it's kind of an older I bra. I also don't wear really bras, do I don't know them very well. Well, so you have to wait yeah. until you get older and you'll mature and your boobs will get bigger and then you'll wear a bra. Fingers yes. crossed, fingers crossed. We'll get you a training bra in the meantime. Yeah. For my moobs, man. Mm-hmm. Get some, uh, Get you a movie holder. Yeah. I can go to American Apparel and be like, ooh. Yeah. They have yeah. movie holders at American Apparel, I'm sure. I'm or sure. Or H&M, the other place that fucking Echo Park asshole shop. Mm. Well, there's a lot of... yeah, and, and you say that Hollywood's got a lot of douche. Okay. Just, I'm just feeling we like... We should just douche off between just, Hollywood and Echo Park. I feel like I feel like anywhere in Southern California, you will find an abundance of douches. Oh, no doubt, but They're it's just, just a matter of style, where... Yeah, different exactly. Kinds. Like and an Orange County douchebag is different from a Hollywood douchebag. Totally, and I won't, even go, like I won't even go there. That's fucking way too there. much for me. Yeah, yeah. That's way too much for me. I, I can't even... That's like New Jersey. Really? We're just debating L.A. as, like, New York types of fucking douchebags oh, okay. right now. All right, all right. That's fair. And Sub- Orange County is, like, New Jersey. Sub-classes of totally. uh, Down from the douchebag tree, splintering out into various uh, douchebag... Uh, Gen- different genres and subgenius of douchebag. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, I'm going to uh, get into some news. Let's see what I should start with. Um, well, I thought that was this was actually kind of amusing. In, um, in the U.K., Yeah. There is a um, there is a, a hotel um, wherein there's a there's a chair. It's just a like I guess in the <laughs> lobby or something. There's a blue chair. A blue chair. And, you don't um, say that's amazing. And and people who sit in the blue chair have all end up giving birth to boys. Oh. Like within a very short while. Wait, were they were they preg- Did they get pregnant by the chair? Yeah, like, is, is it a something? porno? Yeah, hotel? they call it they call it the fertility chair. Oh. Ew. Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah, and what's weird to me is that, like, I, I feel like this is a, the divide between... Hold on, I can turn off the uh, other thing here. There we go. There's a divide between sort of UK and the US. It's like, over there, like, three three or four, let's see. Four. Four women have given birth, all the boys, after sitting on a blue chair. Now, I don't know for the amount of time you have to sit in the blue chair or how soon after they gave birth, but there are women there that refuse to sit in the blue chair, but he's afraid of it. I feel like well, that's I would be afraid of a chair that knocked people up too. Yeah, I don't so want a fucking I. chair baby. Yeah, or a chair. Wants ba- that's a chair bastard. I Who's the guy so that does the, the refills on the chair? The I janitor. Yeah. The fucking guy who cleans the hotels at night. Right. Duh. That's good seed right there. Yeah. yeah. We got to get a hold really? of. We got to get sit down with Raul <laughs> and, and work that shit out. Uh, what's interesting is I feel like if that was if that was here in the U.S. and there was a hotel with a fertility chair, chicks would be lined up around the fucking block. But over there, they're afraid of it. I like that. I like that kind of thinking. Uh, I think guys would be lined up around the block, too. Do you think (laughs) that women in the United States are more interested in procreation than in the U.K.? Absolutely. Why do you think that? I have no idea. Okay, because there's no... Why why do I think (laughs) that it happens? Or why do I I think it? Why do you have that opinion? Uh, mostly because of things like this, where the girls are. Did avoiding somebody try to baby chair. trap you the other day or something? No, not Did somebody the, refuse no. to sit in your blue chair, or they tried to make <laughs> you their blue chair or something? Let's not talk about. This is not about my blue chair. Oh, okay, let's, it's somebody did do that. Let's talk about. Let's talk about the hotel blue chair. We don't need to talk about my blue oh chair. Oh my god! I've never. I've never been baby trapped, and uh, I've never. I've never had the. Uh, if someone tried a, to baby trap I've never me done once. That, that finger, like if there's not a ring on this finger by X amount of time. Someone tried okay. to baby trap me once. It was horrible. Boy or uh, girl. Girl. Duh, boy. Okay. Baby trap you how? Like he was poking by, holes in the condoms? Or? By, no, by like, I was really young and we were using the pull-out method and he just decided to hold on to my hips one time. Wow. Asshole. Now, now was it really a baby thing or was he like, no, I need to I need to get um, up in them guts and try this shit out? Well, okay. that I think that that's what men call baby trapping is say, I need to get up in them guts and try this shit out. You guys just... If that's I think your that's way a better way to put it. <laughs> well, sure, of course you do. You have a penis. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, you know, I'm gonna side with my own. No, he wanted me to quit porn and be a housewife. Oh, uh, okay. Well, then yes, it was very yeah, much a baby a trap. trap. It was yeah. a baby trap. Yeah, he was trying to get me to stop being a sex worker. Hmm. Yeah, that can't go in for that. That's an asshole right there. Yeah. 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 You ever? Um, I'm sure you have that conversation with guys all the time, where where they eventually, like at first, they're like, "Yeah, man, it's cool, whatever," and then they're like, "I hey, so about me being cool with that?" Um, Every single time, actually. Every know. single time, it goes exactly that way. 
Well, there is and a I thing say, are like you that. sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? You sure that you're cool with this? And they're like, yeah, I just don't want to hear about it. And I'm like, that's the, the ticker. Uh, you don't want to yeah. hear about it. If you're not in, if you're not that into swinging, where you actually want to like be there or participate or whatever. Sure. If you can't go, like I, I'm also a lifestyle polyamorous. I go to orgies and I expect whoever I'm dating to be interested in participating because I like that. Sure. I'm like, this girl, this nice girl here, has agreed to have sex with the two of us. I talked to her about it yesterday or earlier in the day. Mm-hmm. She's very hot. I don't see why you wouldn't be okay with this. And if they're not okay with it, I'm like, uh. So you've had dudes that were okay with the polyamory, okay with the orgy party, things like this, but then suddenly got uppity about the porn way after the fact? No. Or do they do they sort of drop everything at once? It's the, they, they talk like they're okay with it. And then they get there and they're like, fuck, this chick is not kidding. Like, when... when when we get to the orgy and I'm immediately hitting nitrous and like punching some girl in the face and she's like, you know, dripping down her leg and they see that I'm not fucking around about being lifestyle, then they get like, what the fuck have I, what kind of bear trap have I put my foot in? Right, right. That's not good. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. It's funny sometimes. No, I mean, it's not good for them that they lie like that. It's um... No, I don't think that it's, I think that they thought they knew what they were getting themselves into, but if you've never dated a porn star or if you don't hang out with a lot of them, you sure. can think you know what the porn lifestyle is like, but until you actually see it done in front of you, like that amount of sexual abandon in front of you, it's unusual in current American culture. And sure, people sure. can want to, they can have the fantasy of it, yeah, but once yeah. they see it, it's a whole other fucking story. And that I, I understand that reaction to it. Yeah, naturally. It's just people just... Um, it, again, it's it's everything sounds good in theory. You know yes. what I mean? People try to be, especially in L.A., they're very open-minded. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Oh, yeah, no, it's fine. Everything's, you know, everybody does their thing. And then uh, they're suddenly, like, in the thick of it, and they're like, I'm, it sounded a lot cooler in, you know, when I was at home jerking off I think to they it. also don't understand because I'm very normal and I'm average girl. Every day at home, I like to watch cartoons Sure. I cook a really nice steak. I drink beer. I go hiking in the park, but I also like orgies and big black hot porn. Sure. I, I mean, everybody's got their. I, I do think it's one of those things where it's like everybody's got their uh, certain things they're into, and then there's just you know. I find that it's funny because if you compared the shit that people who would be frowned upon in society for for having uh, feeling openly or doing openly orgies and so on and so mm-hmm. forth, if you compared that to the people who put on what they call the good guy badge and try to stay, you know, clean and neat. And, and look at me, I'm a shining example. They have the most fucked up shit going on. They do. They fuck like hookers and be, lie to their wives. Yeah, yeah. They're going to have dead babies in the basement and shit like that. Yeah. And they become president. Yeah. And they become president, exactly. <laughs> they do. Or priests. <laughs> something. Televangelists. There's always something where it's like... I think if... But I think if I were... It comes out like that. But that's the stereotype is that you're really clean and then you fuck hookers and lie to your wife. And they, people think that if you're a porn star, the stereotype is that you're on drugs or you're bipolar sure, or you're sure. crazy. You couldn't possibly be that well adjusted that you're a genuinely polyamorous person who just missed the 60s and wants to fucking recreate that. Well, that's why I, that's where I get abandoned. into the theory that, that we all need that balance. So whenever I don't know what somebody's fucking thing is that, yeah. that I don't know about. You don't trust them. I'm a little, yeah, I'm a little like, well, hold on. I know you, you're not all clean There's and everything. Something. There's something in there. You you on the weekend you like getting fucked in the ass by, you know, tweakers. If you're Ted Wait Haggard, a minute. if you're big on Ted Haggard, I mean, I'm just saying. You I know, don't know something that tweakers like that. fuck. Do tweakers fuck in the? I guess they do. They fucked Ted Haggard in the ass. I always thought that was weird that he he was he was a I don't know if you know who Ted Haggard no, is. He was a uh, he was a evangelical uh, preacher. He actually ran the uh, Universal Church of Life in Colorado. And he had a number of like congregations. He was huge in the televangelism scene, and he had a congregation of like, I want to say like five million, seven wow, million. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, and they were big on they. One of their big goals was curing the gay. You know, big on that. Yeah, and so for a number of years, I want to say like five years or something like that, he would kind of escape on the weekends, and he would pay this this meth addict guy to come oh, over, I do bring him this meth. Story. Yeah, bring him meth. And then he would suck that dude's cock and get fucked in the ass. And I always thought, like, that's not a... I mean, that you're you're gay. At the, like, that's not a yes. weekend gay. No, that's if gay. If you were like, you know what, I'll let a tweaker suck my dick. Like, you could sort of... Yeah, look, a mouth is a mouth. Close exactly. your eyes. Exactly, blowjobs are blowjobs. Right. 
but and maybe even fuck it in the ass because then it's like he probably goes home and sort of tries to slip it in the in the man wife, ass maybe. is very different than lady ass. I imagine so. I think that ass fucking feel like and could... kissing are officially over the gay line, but BJ is just experimenting. Yeah, that's fair. That's okay, fair to say. Or hand jobs. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> when you got it under the line on that one. And Word. not that you guys ever have, but for me, when I kiss a guy who has facial hair, I notice the masculinity that's very present. Whereas if someone were going down on me, you don't notice facial hair quite as much. That's true. When that's in true. Your crotch. I find that when I'm getting a hand job from a dude, it's. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell the mask because they grip harder, you know? Yeah. They're, they're more it's determined. It's so hard for me to sit yeah. in here with you fucking smokers. I'm sorry. Are you not smoking anymore? Didn't no, you used to smoke? I, I Did you never smoke? I used to be a crazy... You know that I used to be. That's what I was thinking. It's like, is and it I killing quit. you because you really want a cigarette? Totally. Yeah. All right. Totally. Well, I apologize. It's, it's fine. Just, can I have that's a how we roll. I mean, yeah, I'm fine with that. There's can cigarettes cigarette right there. Mitch? Do I have to have a menthol one? That's all we got. Ugh. Sorry. Oh, Hollywood. That'll, that'll, that'll keep you from smoking too much. Oh, Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, it's, it's my own thing. It's a funny story about that, if you'd like to hear it. Yes. Now, I was a uh, Marlboro Red smoker for most of my smoking career. And I then, think I uh, remember that. Yeah, I was big on the Marlboro Reds. And then I uh, um, I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to quit you know, once and for all. And uh, I had remembered, like, in high school, I had a friend who said that he quit smoking because he went to a hypnotherapist. And I thought, well, that's the only thing I haven't tried. Let's, let's give that a shot. Oh, boy. I went to a hypnotherapist, and uh, it was an interesting thing when I went, you know, under. He had me envision all these scenarios, and, and at one point in the thing, he says, okay, now you're embracing cigarettes, and you, you've got to, you know. Because I was telling him how I felt about cigarettes. He says, you take, you, you're, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Basically, uh, uh, personifying cigarettes as, like, your buddy. Yeah. Because it's been there. Every time something goes fucked, I'm like, well, I got my cigarette. So, yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Maybe so he's like, he's right like, now. so I need you to say goodbye to your buddy. You know what I mean? Huh. So this is because I have a very weird active imagination. In my head, I, I envisioned this life-size <laughs> cigarette, like with little spindly like arms. Like Mr. Butts from fucking the Berkeley Breed comics? Probably, yeah. Very similar to that. I okay. imagine just a life-size cigarette, very spindly arms, you know, with the big white gloves and stuff. Mm. And he was like, hey, buddy, you know. And he wanted to like kick it. He was like, "Let's, you know, let's have a smoke, you know." And and I was like, "Look, man, I I can't be doing this shit anymore, man. I gotta I gotta kick it. I gotta get rid of you. I gotta I gotta move on. I you know to what quit I mean? You. I you you just you're just not right for me anymore." And so I was like, "I gotta I gotta move on." And uh, so I I went to like he's like, "All right," and he kind of gave me this like, and he didn't really talk so much. He just had very expressive face and he kind of gave me this like hey buddy it's cool give me a hug and we're done and went to go give him a hug and he had this really just evil fucking like i got him grin <laughs> and so i beat the living shit out of this cigarette oh i just God. kicked it and i'm, I'm what did, it, did you tell the hypnotherapist that you beat the shit out of the cigarette i did i did I, I beat the shit out of the cigarette and there was a part where he's like you're about to walk down these stairs when you get out the at the bottom of the stairs and I was imagining the stairs in my old complex where you'd go down the thing and at the end there was a doorway and mm -hmm. just bright light because you're out on the Hollywood Boulevard. And I, so I, I, that's what I, was, I was walking down the stairs. I'm kicking this dude down, throwing him at the bottom of the stairs, stomping on him and shit. I'm like, fuck you, cigarette. So then I left and I had zero desire to smoke. I had no interest in smoking. Really? Um, yeah, I was like, I'm done. I have no interest in smoking. And I, and I even tried to smoke a Marble Red and I almost threw up. It was just so... Because they were just like evil. I'm like, you fucking evil Marlboro Reds. But I had a roommate who smoked <laughs> menthol cloves. What? Yeah. Menthol cloves? Yeah. What yeah. did that taste I didn't like? Even, yeah, very good, actually. Because hmm. uh, the hypnotherapist neglected to mention that one should not get drunk within, I think, a week of like the <laughs> hypnotherapy. That would have been helpful to know. Because I was, the buddy I was kind of an alcoholic at the, the time. And I was like, you know, you should have yeah. mentioned that. Yeah. So I'm... I'm like a couple days later, I'm getting drunk and and I'm like, hey, let me get one of these uh, menthol clothes. Let me try these suckers out because I'm thinking I always in my head I always thought they didn't have nicotine. Uh, they did, so yeah, they I ended do. up getting like over time over about a month's period, I ended up getting to the point where I was buying my own packs of menthol clothes. Still can't to Those this day cannot smoke a Marlboro Red without just like wanting to throw up. Clothes are like cigar special occasion cigarettes. They're not for not every anymore. Day. They're all gone now. They're yes. illegal now. Yeah. Clothes. Mm -hmm. Really? They took them away from us, yeah. Two years ago. Yeah, yeah. I guess I haven't been gothic for a long time. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, it, I, I, 
there was was it wasn't the last show we did right when was the TK episode that was yeah it was two shows ago I I told a story about Talked how about that, yeah. how cloves went by by and it is sort of they'll never come back it's not like we're gonna undo that law somebody's not gonna wake up and be like you know what people should have their cloves it's I not guess happening. the gods had to trade their cloves for absinthe. Yeah, it yes. seems like it, doesn't it? Yeah. That absinthe thing is getting out of control. You you go to those, you, you have the absinthe, or, or do you just um, I just buy the, the, the kind that you can get in liquor stores now. I go to BevMo, oh, okay. and I just buy the Matahari brand. It's delicious. Do you it's put got, it over the sugar cube and all that? I like do. The thing I find? Wow, water, you yeah. get all... I do, yeah. I like it. It's delicious. I had it in fancy. Europe a very, very long time ago, and I had the regular Pernod kind, which is way better tasting. Mm. I now I was guys. reading that, like, when we, oddly enough, that is one band that we lifted. We lifted the absinthe band. Apparently, we have less regulation on absinthe than any other country. Um, no, we there's a certain amount of wormwood that can be in absinthe, so we have weaker absinthe than Europe does. No, that's the assumption. That's what I'm saying. The thing I was reading was that was because of the laws we used to have, people assume that it's still that way, but it turns gotcha. out that actually it's stronger here than say, I guess Germany. Probably not like Amsterdam. I'm sure you could. Spain is where inject they have heroin the good. into there. Uh. Yeah, that time I was in Amsterdam, I got off the train and somebody was shooting up in the train station, and I decided that, that fucking city was for me. Mm. <laughs> I've decided the polar opposite when that happened to me in Seattle. Uh, first uh, okay, day I was in Seattle. Seattle junkies are completely different than Amsterdam junkies. That's true. They're not as romanticized. It's true. Uh, they're not. It's nice. not as you know. They're shitty and they yeah. steal and they're crappy and. A lot of rain, a lot of suicide. Yeah. It's a miserable I, place I, to I be. I like Seattle, actually, but I have if never lived there. You go in the there, summer, so. it's a gorgeous place, but uh, can't do it. Too much fucking rain. Not not into it at all. Hmm. Okay, uh, let's see. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait for, to get into the morbid news that I have later. I'll wait for that. Oh, okay. Okay. Just for roll now. right into it. We're no, I'm going to I'm gonna get track. to a different one that's, that's okay. slightly more upbeat. <laughs> <laughs> so no one kills himself in the bathroom I, yeah, before yeah. the show's over? This, the other one's not so much. I mean, it's morbid, but like, there's a part of me that just can't help but giggle about the whole thing. Um, so at the LaSalle University uh, ethics class, strippers uh, came in and gave lap dances. Um, <laughs> and the teacher said that um, he was uh, the, he wanted to. Um, what is it? What's the, the the class was about the application of Platonic and Hegelian ethics in regards to business, which. Which you almost see like okay, I could I could sort of see where you're trying to make like a larger point, and strippers are a good like either or a scenario. But then I read more into the article. Okay. And uh, students are saying stuff like, uh, "What was the thing? Uh, what is the one? Uh, uh, Rappaport is the guy's name. Uh, had been teaching at LaSalle since 1979. It was well known among students, according to comments posted on RapeByProfessors.com." And in one of the comments is, extremely strange man, loves gambling, horse racing, and strip joints. Talks about all of the above all of the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now it's like, well, then this really isn't about an ethics class anymore, is it? This is, you just wanted to get some strippers in the I class. I think that's what he wanted to do, sure. <laughs> felt like, you know what, I could, I could probably pull some strippers in here and fucking get this, get this happening. Is he still you know? teaching? Uh, I guess I'm they're sure looking, he is. They're, they are investigating the matter. College oh. professors are... An interesting lot. Like a tenure. Did you hook up with a college professor? I'm I'm seeing a little. There's a I story was, I here. I was I was more of a I was more interested in my high school teachers actually. Um, but I hung out with a bunch of college professors and they were they're interesting people. You were interested in high school teachers when you were in high school or now? When I was in high school. Not so much now. No, well, why now? I don't know. Because well, you had something when I was under eighteen. Then. It was a power thing just to see if I could get them to break a law or not. Wow. Did it ever work? No. I came really close one time. How's that? Oh, I uh, stayed after and was really interested in what one of my science teachers had to say. He was also 24. I don't know that 24-year-olds should be teaching 17-year-olds. Probably That's close. Not. Probably not. That's very close. Probably not. But, I mean, so, so when you say you got close just that you were there, there was, but, but nothing, you didn't, like, pull a boob out? No, I, I, before porn, I was never particularly physically extroverted. Hmm. Okay. I was more of a conversational seducer, I think. Okay. Conversational. D Justin, do you ever have a thing for teachers? Any uh, of your teachers? I had a thing with a teacher. Oh, oh did you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do tell. Yeah. She got me out of, I was a freshman and I hung out with a bunch of seniors. Freshman in high school or college? High school. Nice. Yeah. She was, um, 
she was she Lucky just started bastard. teaching and yeah she um also she 24 was, <laughs> she was too, you, no she was well 27 i think oh okay and so um, that's that's yeah she yeah, was there you go yeah she was like the overseer of the yearbook committee and um i was taking a bunch of photos as the class clown freshman and um she was like, oh, Justin, you want to check out these photos? I'm like, yeah. So I'd stay what after. What kind of photos did she show oh, you? Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, like, I like where the story's going. She's like going through. She's like, this is a nice picture of the side of the building. <laughs> oh, that's my pussy. I don't know. How did that get in there? That's, that's weird. Sorry. Sorry. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You'll notice this is the quad. Uh, this is the new tree they planted. Oh, my God. Well, there's what me, is that doing there? There's me sucking a cock. How did that? I'm that's sorry. This is this is really an imp- I'm sorry. I'm going to put Are that away. Are you interested in this? I'm like, I'm a freshman. Of course I am. <laughs> I'm a dude <laughs> over what do you the think age about of that? one what do you think about um like the the idea of female teachers kind of being sexual predators on young guys most people feel like that's okay but it's not okay when it's reversed you you kind of have yeah you kind of have to take that shit as i mean when you're being realistic about it mm-hmm. like the difference is a girl in high school being you know getting into some sort of a tryst with her teacher is going to be far more damaged by that than uh, a male who's getting some ass. Why do you think that she'll be I don't more know. damaged? Oh, yeah, why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> because it, it, there's, there is that sense of power play. There is that sort of, you know what I mean? Uh, like It's a, sort of the same thing with the, like the boss sleeping with an underling. And, and frankly, when it comes to bosses, like male or female, it kind of goes the same way. But I feel like when it's a female boss or female teacher, if it's a female in a position of power, and then there's a guy who's you know the sort of underling... <laughs> because men are generally considered dominant. <laughs> anyway, I feel like it sort of evens out. Are you endorsing dominatrixes, Mitch? Is that <laughs> what's going on here? Always. Not that you didn't previously endorse that sort of thing. But I, I endorse it. Are you officially I, endorsing I, I endorse it in theory. You know what I'm saying? Oh. I, I don't personally uh, mm-hmm. use their services. I don't understand it in any way. Uh, but Wait, I certainly, what do you mean you don't understand It's not it. my place to... I, I said it on my DVD. It's the same thing with strippers. I don't understand dominatrices because I don't, I don't grasp the concept of paying a woman okay, to but treat what about me a like lifestyle? shit and beat the fuck out of me. What about a lifestyle? Like If I wanted that, I'd just get married, right? <laughs> what about a lifestyle dominatrix? I mean... Where there's just, an, just, in other words, a not an exchange of money Right, situation. right. I understand. I, I, I'm not personally into uh, women um, uh, being the dominant one when in bed. Yeah. Um, I think it's cute. Don't get me wrong. It's cute. Uh, That's why I stopped dating Puerto Ricans. <laughs> Very dominant, are they? Fucking hot. They are fucking hot. Just uh, that they're hot, they're also... Oh, I mean, hot physically, maybe, some of them, but, like, hot-headed, just, and they're just like... Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know so that they're tempers? dominant, necessarily. I think that I agree that they're having dated lots of Puerto Rican women who, <laughs> while I worked in a dungeon, um, almost all of them were lifestyle bottoms. Really, really heavy. Almost like that they would goad you into slapping them around with their hot headedness, like that they wanted that sort of control over them. You think maybe that they they switch that opposite for dudes? You know what I mean? No. Just sort of make up for it. No, because I I think that most of the girls that I I dated when I worked in a dungeon also had boyfriends and they like they preferred tops. Yeah. Male and yeah. female. When it comes to top and bottom, especially with women, it's not a gender thing. It's whether you're a top or a bottom. That's fair. That's fair. Generally. Not yeah. always, obviously, but generally. Yeah. Well, getting back to this, let's say, teachers fucking students thing, I'll tell you, <laughs> I'll put it this way. I'll put it this way. When, in, my, in my high school, uh, and I went to two different high schools, in my first high school, the photography teacher, female, uh, it, had, it had been shy of, of practically just fact. It was just one of those... Nobody had more rumors floating around about her than this photography teacher. And had and my sister was three years older than me. She went to that school, and it was a rumor back in her day too, where it's like I knew a guy who knew a guy, and then somebody in my class went on like a skiing trip with her. So like it oh, was pretty well known, trips. and she was like she was she was pretty she was pretty hot. Oh, she I was, saw that she DVD. was an older. Uh, it's a Shane's <laughs> World DVD, I think. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> She was uh, she was probably like in her mid mid to late thirties, but she 
to me, she looked hotter suddenly, knowing that she fucking got it on with these, you know, high school boys. I was like, can I could I could go for that. I clearly was way too like scrawny and fucking weird for her to bother with, <laughs> which made me feel inadequate. But um, <laughs> no, but it, so there was that, and then there was another. There was another uh, in in a later school. There was a teacher. I don't know if it was ever true or whatever. It was one of those. This guy may have been fucking this girl thing, and it had a very different feel very different vibe where he mm-hmm. was like a stalker you know what i mean it was but maybe he was maybe he wasn't but the vibe you yeah. know what i'm saying yes. and that's what i'm saying is i think that because men are generally considered dominant and women are generally considered submissive when there's a a power switch like that where the woman has a position of power a dominant um role in in a given scenario i feel like in a way it sort of evens out you know what i mean I, it, there is something kind of creepy about that, you know what I mean? A guy who, say, in his forties, and you know, not that a chick isn't, but I feel like uh, I don't know. It, there's, there's not a. It's, it's tough to come down and say like, oh, this is this and that's that. But there is a different vibe. You don't, you don't agree? I have been using that people agree with your assessment to my advantage pretty much my entire life. Right. But no, I don't agree. You don't. But I, but I use it to my advantage anyway. Because it's there, sure. and I can't change it. Sure, why not? I exist yeah. in the world the way it is, but no, I don't. I don't agree. Hmm. Okay. Justin, you want to weigh in on this? <laughs> Got anything at all to say? I concur. <laughs> which, with which side? There's, there's <laughs> opposing viewpoints. <clears throat> where, where? What were we? Where? What's going on? Yeah. What's? How going, are you no, guys no, no. doing? I'm just no. I'm just thinking back to um, because I had a thing. Like I said, I had a thing mm. with the uh, with the yeah, teacher. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about this. But uh, no, no, no. I shouldn't because then someone will look this up and she'll go to jail. Uh, I was just gonna say you're you don't basically, have to say you don't have to say what class is that a, is that a felony? No. Well, actually, you kind of did already. Give all those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck it. Gave it. Gave it it Nobody that, has to know. Is that a felony? It's fine. I don't know. Sagittarius? I know it's frowned upon. It's frowned upon. It's nothing happened. Upon. There was nothing happened. I do also, by the way, I do think that I do think that that statutory rape should not be considered rape and it shouldn't go under the sex crime laws. Sex, uh, like you shouldn't have to file as a sex offender for things like flashing, um, statutory rape. Those are the two that come to mind. Um, I masturbating in your car in traffic. Because that's just Friday, really. I mean, <laughs> what are you gonna do? Friday. You're stuck. You're stuck in traffic. You're like, you know what? I'm gonna pull it's out my pesky. Come on, have a wink. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> the hell else am I supposed to do? But I, I feel like they shouldn't be on the sex offender list because that's what worries me. Is you look at the, you know, everybody's got those fucking maps now and shit, which has I'm, its own implications. I but have a weird. I have a weird perspective on that because I Please am do. against uh, anyone registering as a sex offender, but. When I was a teenager, I sat through um, deposition, case depositions with a friend of mine who was raped horribly. And she's, she's fucked up for the rest of her life because of what her stepfather did to her. Uh, she lost her that'll... virginity at 13, before yeah. puberty, on the way to church in a car. Like, she's completely fucked for the rest of her life. And she's an amazing, beautiful girl who is completely fucked because of that. And part of her testimony uh, was used to put Megan's Law on the books. Oh. And I sat there with her because we were very close friends while she was yeah. doing this um, deposition. And that's the kind of situation where, I mean, it, the thing is, it, when I've looked into, like, like pedophiles and things like that uh-huh. and, and long-term abuse, uh, uh, incest, or n- in that case, not really incest, but may as well be. Right. Um, th- those are, those people, are, th- there's no cure. They're not going to suddenly go, you know, that was well, wrong. Well, it's also wrong that they throw them in a jail because that's not going to fucking help them. Sitting in a jail isn't going to make them repent their crime. They need to be in a mental institution. They need well, medication. I feel like, they need I feel a doctor. like you know, s- stick them in, stick them in with people who will rape them proper, so they know what it feels like. Put them in general population, like okay. and they'll that's get that's fucked. Fine. I'm okay with that's that. fine. But what if when they were a kid, they were raped, and that's why they're they have that cycle? What if they're perpetuating the cycle of abuse? It's true too. But it's yeah, true I mean, almost in all cases. Yeah. Right, but uh, what I'm saying is that 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 person is not going to suddenly uh, repent oh, or change not. their ways. Definitely not. So what would be the purpose of sticking them in a mental institution? To try and rehabilitate them. But you can't. That's, I mean, there are no case studies. No one tries. No, there's plenty of case studies. And that's what I'm saying. It's like uh, across the board, the psychiatrists will tell you they're like, they're the one, like, the, the highest rate of recidivism is with rapists and pedophiles. Yeah. 
mostly pedophiles more than anything else. Yeah. Rapists, you know, they get into this gray area where it's like, you know, was it this and was it that? And did he, you know, was it a passion fucking thing? You know, whatever have you. And, and this is certainly not making an excuse for rapists. I don't want anybody thinking that. <laughs> but I, I just, just so it's clear, there, there's, there's a difference between like a serial rapist and a guy who, you know, roofied a chick or whatever have you. Um, insofar as uh, recidivism and uh, pedophiles, though, it's like they across. The, it's like ridiculous. Something, Do you remember the I'm George the, Carlin? I'm with jail the, the chemical system. castration idea, though. What's that? Ooh, I like that. Um, yeah. Actually, I have another thing yeah, about yeah. that that I was talking about with a, a client of mine recently, and and. Um, and rapists and what they should go through in jail. Um, do you remember the George Carlin comedy skit where he talked about the different jails, how states that are yes, square should, yes, be, yes. should be, you should, the rapist should go in one state and then they should have Rape, days where they and pulled. Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pulled. for three seconds. Yeah. Put um, that shit on pay-per-view. I, it's a little known Get fact. Get Budweiser involved. It's a little known fact that um, prostate massage and milking will cause a man to not be able to either get an erection or to be able to ejaculate fully and completely in the same way that you have an orgasm the way you masturbate or when you fuck. Sure, sure. Um, and I postulated that dominatrixes should be hired to work in jails or in hospitals or whatever, and that every morning the sex offenders, the male sex offenders, should be milked to take the venom out of their snakes. Hmm. That's not a bad idea, but then it, it gets into that. Well... I think it's you more kinda, effective than putting them on medication currently. It is, it is. But then you get into that thing. It's like, would the state ever sanction going like, "Hey, this is what we're this, what we're doing now. We got this new plan. We but get we some girls in here to milk too much the on milk the snakes prisons. You know Honestly, what I'm saying? <laughs> considering things that states and currently really sanction gonna... and what our country currently sanctions that it's, it's appropriate to spend money on, I don't see it as that fucking far fetched. Okay, obviously we would just have to do it at Gitmo. Sure. Sure. <laughs> We Waterboard them and it, milk them. Yeah, yeah, we'd have to keep it there. We yeah, couldn't yeah. do it, you know, out, outside of Gitmo. They would all have to be shipped so then there. You got a, yeah, but then, then you got a transportation problem, and now we're spending more money on that. What I'm saying is the, the reversible chemical castration, because they found that, that in the case of pedophiles, if, if you took away that urge, uh, what, the, Prozac? Uh, pro, the hormones, whatever have you, um, they're, they they won't they they're good to go. So you're so talking about you could, Prozac or could, like actually giving them like hormones like a, that there's transsexuals a, there's take. There's a I don't know the name of it, but there is a uh, and I'm sure it's still in trials or something like that. There is a chemical like injection basically that'll that'll chemically castrate you more or less. Oh, if uh, you gave a guy enough a uh, of, estrogen for it like would a period of change. a year or two, and then so they could just get regular shots like that basically. Now this this sex offender database thing you're saying that you're 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 uh, opposed to registering of any kind. I don't know if you're going on the data that's the. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember where it was. I want to say like Still Delaware or something like that, mm -hmm. where they where they basically it was something like you couldn't if you were a registered sex offender you couldn't live within let's say five miles of a school. And then it was like, oh, and also they can't live within 10 miles of this and three miles of that and Park one mile and of that. All this stuff. Yeah. 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 To where there was no place left for them to go. Well, like they don't own a car. Yeah. They know how the fucking buses work. So they, they had to go to the next town over because they literally were not allowed to live there because there was no place that qualified. Are there rapist towns popping In up? The, of that? uh, yeah, that's basically what happened. So they went to the next town over because they're like, we can't legally live anywhere in the city limits because there's no place that doesn't have a park or a school or a whatever within X amount of miles. So they went to the next town over and then just said, fuck it, I'll drop myself off the list and go into hiding. So now they have this huge, we don't know where any of them are because they made so many laws about where they can't live that now they're just gone into hiding because they got to live somewhere and they're just won't register. They're like, fuck it. I think if parents had conversations with children about appropriate sexual behavior and didn't try to repress have the problem. any sexual Wait, 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 wait. Let's not get would... crazy. You're suggesting parents talk to their kids about, about sex? Hold on That now. the fucking pedophiles could live wherever they wanted because there were a whole lot in the town that I grew up in. No, I agree. And when they asked you to get in their van with them, you said, no, thank you, asshole. And you kept walking with a group of your friends that you were walking around with. Again, you're suggesting that parents talk to their kids, and uh, am, we can't I'm, have that in this country. I'm, I'm, that's why there's a. I'm that's a why we can't person. allow gay marriage because somebody's got to talk to their little snot-nosed brat about two gay men love each other, and we don't know how to handle that. 
<laughs> it's, it's, it's all it comes down to that. Like, what am I, I supposed to tell I, my kid? I wish that I knew what um, institution it was that just published a study on that um, children that are adopted or born into um, gay parents are extremely well adjusted. Yeah, well, that, that's what I, I read a similar study. And the, the biggest problem it doesn't come as a surprise, but it's sort of ironic. The biggest problem they have is uh, bullying from other kids that don't understand that. Yeah. Which is like, that's not the gay kids fault or the gay parents fault. It's the straight it's, parents. It's the fault. fucking yeah. It's the bigoted straight parents. They're like, you're all fags. Look, they have fag kids and everything. You know, How come your like... clothes match? <laughs> <laughs> How come you're so well dressed? Now, which one's maroon <laughs> and which one's? Why are you a such a good red? artist? Damn it! <laughs> now tell me what mauve is. <laughs> how do you know how to cook? God damn it! Yeah, I don't know. Are you want me to get into the morbid shit? Um, you might as well. We're just not going to get off a morbid topic. I'm sorry. It's fine. I mean, I'm, right. I'm fine with it. I'm I'm down for whatever. You're down y'all. for the morbid. Down for the morbid. Um, this is in, um, hold on, let me make sure I got the, what's weird is it's re- re- reported in a UK magazine, so I thought it was, it took place in the UK, but no, it took place in Oregon. Um, I had an open mic. No, not a comedy open mic. Okay. That's a, yeah, <laughs> like, that's, a, that's the first thing that I thought. <laughs> I was like, here comes the story. <laughs> at an open mic, a man came named, uh, Kip Rusty Walker, which is a pretty killer name, I gotta say. That is pretty killer. Played a song called Sorry for All the Mess. Then he pulled out a six-inch blade and stabbed himself in the chest repeatedly until he died on stage. Wow. Whoa! Was this in Seattle? Where was this? This Oregon? was in Oregon. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is the most okay. hardcore. So at first, everybody was like, wow, that looks really realistic. This is a great performance art piece. He's making a point about teen su- you know, whatever. And then he just fucking dropped dead. And they were like, oh, that was a real knife, real chest stabbing. And I'm trying to wrap my head around, like, what the fuck? What what would I think if I was... Would I think it was also a performance art piece? Or would I think, holy shit, this dude's stabbing himself in the chest? I don't know. Very weird. But he... The fucking weirdest part is he was telling everybody he was going to do it for, like, a while. He was telling friends of his. There's even a quote from one of his friends that, mm. that makes me think, like, seriously, dude, you didn't try to get this guy help? How many yeah. hits did he get on YouTube? Um... I don't think there's video. Oh. I was thinking the same thing, Damn. too. Um, the friend said, uh, one of Walker's friends claimed that he'd been tra- planning to kill himself in a public place for some time. The friend said, it was almost like he wanted to prove a point. Like, there's no point in being scared of death because it's going to happen to us anyway. I don't think that's the point he was trying to prove. And then he said, I actually told him, I was like, dude, this is going to mess a lot of people up. Like, uh, thanks, wait, you got, to, yeah, you got to that point in the conversation and didn't try to talk a dude out of it like I, that's that's most weird suicides are not self stab self stabbing because it's very hard to uh, stab yourself i know to death repeatedly yeah. in the chest it's hard to you stab yourself repeatedly at all anywhere yeah. yeah in your hand in your arm anything yeah your body's natural reaction is to don't do that again your survival instinct kicked in that kid yeah, must have yeah. been really sick yeah, clearly, clearly. And I mean, that's the sort of thing where it's like, it surprises the hell to me that this friend of his would say like, you know, like, oh, that's going to mess some people up. Like, really, that's your reaction to it? Is that's like, you're gonna fucking fuck, shitty. You're going to fuck people up? Like, it's a noble death. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> he did a sort of seppuku, but yeah. he's, yeah. he's, he's but, off by about yeah. a foot. But not yeah. Yeah. at all. Like, what was that guy that, uh, was that protester uh, who like did a, he did a speech and... Uh, in Japan, he did a speech, and then he took some generals and stuff hostage, and he and he did a seppuku thing, and uh, and there's a whole. I was reading up one night. I was really bored. I, I get into these things where I, I found out one little factoid, and I'm like, I need to know more. And then I research it. Anyway, so the the general accepted way of doing it when you do like an honor killing of yourself, more or less, the way that they they talk about the seppuku, 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 seppuku. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I say it wrong all this time. Uh, is that you stab yourself basically at the side of the stomach and then you tear across? Yeah. yeah. But then, uh, generally speaking, when it's when it's something like that where you're like I've I've shamed whatever yeah. somebody else. Takes a swipe at your head, yeah, and they need like certain specially trained fuckers that are like really good with sandwich. So yeah, because that would be really fucking hard too. (laughs) 
Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, it's hard enough when they did it with a machine all those times. And then, because it, I don't know what it is about Japanese and the suicides, man. Uh, if you if you're the guy that has to lop the head and you don't do one clean, you got a seppuku. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. just I mean it's just an Hazardous ongoing profession. chain. It really yeah. is. So this this Japanese guy did this speech and he tied up all these generals and stuff. And then in in the room he went to seppuku. And the dude who was supposed to lop his head off fucked up, so he had to. So then this other guy did both a, heads at the same time. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, there should be that's a movie right that. there. Yeah, I read an interview with the guy who had to do it, and he was like, "Oh, what do we do?" You know, like he not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I call it Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so a guy stabbed himself in the chest uh, at an open mic. And I really, yeah, when I first read it, I was like, an open mic? Like, uh, that's a crazy, how that's... am I going to top that? But thankfully, it was a <laughs> music open mic. I don't need to top that. You musicians are Can crazy. you imagine that? All right. Uh, while they clean the stage. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next up, uh, <laughs> At what point Roger. did they realize that, I mean, how long had he been dead on the stage before it? Apparently and, I mean, once... he obviously hit a vital organ or he, he would have to bleed to death. Uh, let's see. Um... He, it says that he repeatedly plunged the six-inch blade into his chest as the audience clapped and cheered in the mistaken belief it was a piece of performance art. Holy crap! But when he collapsed in a pool of his own blood, they started screaming in horror and rushed to help him, but his wounds were too severe and he died soon after. Oh, wow. That's okay. the part that confuses me. It's like, okay, performance art, performance art, then he falls down and they're like, oh, that wasn't. That seems a weird time to figure out that it wasn't performance yeah. art it's like once the guy falls because i i feel like if it was performance art you'd have to fall you don't stab yeah. yourself in the chest and, and then stand, stand there or thank walk you off. yeah i i really want to hear that song though sorry for all the mess i like hmm. yeah, i like too. the irony of it as well yeah so that's why i was like part of me wanted to go well i wonder if this video just before the stabbing yeah part, i don't need to see the stabbing but yeah. i'd love to hear the song i do want to hear the song right sorry for all the mess which is also should have been done in the hollywood bowl right you well, know what I mean? You can't see shit, and the fucking seats are so uncomfortable. Because the then Bowl. I would understand the audience going, the was that real? I fucking hate the Hollywood Bowl. I it's so uncomfortable, it. and they, they charge you for a cushion because you're sitting on a wood thing that splinters you in your ass. you got to get drunk enough before you get there that you don't notice that you're sitting on a wood bench. Yes. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yes. But I, I don't know. But they don't have, like, proper drinks there. They just have beer, I think, yeah, Before right? you get you, there. Or you could do oh, the picnic days where you go, you lay out a picnic, you can bring your own. Pre-game or, you know, pills know. maybe. You could just percocet it up and then you wouldn't know the bench either. I'm trying to think what I, I've only, I think I've only been there once, I think. I want to I say twice because I feel like I was like, I should have learned the first time, but yeah. I can't remember. What, I saw Dead Can Dance there and I was like, this was a mistake. Oh, uh, really? This was a I mistake. was sad that I missed that show. I saw Nick Cave there. It was really good. Uh, let me let me recreate the Dead Can Dance uh, concert for you. Really? <laughs> that was it was the most boring concert I've ever. Like every song they I've were like, I know on the album this is an eight and a half reason. minute song that's just one note on the keyboard, but tonight we're doing a special forty two minute performance of that eight minute oh, song. It was like everything was stretched out and had like twelve refrains. And like, oh, let's throw another bridge on top of the bridge. Let's do a bridge inside the bridge. It was fucking atrocious. It was just bad. I, I mean, sure, they played well. They're talented, blah, 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 blah. But I was seriously like, this is, this, I was just in hell. I was like, this cannot go on any longer, can it? And it did. It just kept going. <laughs> so, so the wooden seat splintering the ass did Thank not you. help, is what I'm saying. Richard Pryor uh, famously did a show at the Hollywood Bowl where he was, uh, it was a it was a gay rights benefit, and this is uh, so Richard okay. Pryor. But it was a gay rights benefit, and uh, he said, you know, I think it's great that you guys have a benefit, and I think it's great that you know people are coming together and you know wiping out bigotry. But where the fuck were you assholes when we needed you? You know, and he got this whole thing about how like it's, there was a, all these various rallies he went through in black communities. The gay people would shun the the event. And things like that. So he just went off, and he was calling them fags and everything else like this. And uh, I love Richard Pryor. He's a great man. Was sniffles. I was gonna say he's still alive. From my, from my homie. He was a great, great guy. But uh, I mean, you know, because the thing is, it's like, you know, he used to so suck dick for coke and things like that. Uh, you know, or maybe just for fun. It sounded like the way he told it. It sounded like it could be either way. It was a very so weird, if you like, suck a dick, does that make you gay? 
I, I or is that like, still I experimental? Like, I, th- I feel like you're knocking on that door. Okay. Yeah, I me think too. you're like, hey, let me in. All right. I want to get gay. Uh, I mean, I'm just know, wondering. I, not that I've. I, I just, still, I still, buy, I still am on the, I'm on the line of thinking that there's no straighter gay people. They're just straighter gay activities. You know what I'm saying? I'm still on that level right. of where it's like, because I mean that's the way we have to go as a culture anyway. There's butt sex, right. blowjobs, sure, and flower arranging something. Right. Right. I just feel like, you know, because I I feel like, you know, there's certain people that that would, you know, I've known men and women who've been like, yeah, I'm totally straight, but this one girl or this one guy was like, I would fuck that dude, you know, and. Yeah. I I know a lot of people like that, too. You see, so I feel like at some point as a culture, we have to get to that point where it's like there is no straighter gay people per se. There's just straighter gay activities. Johnny Depp used to be out until he started doing those. He's what? There's another pirate movie coming out, isn't there? He he was out really? No, no, no. I'm saying he used to be hot to me. Oh, hot! I thought you said he used but to be you out. Say out. Like, As oh, I said out. I meant yeah, hot. All right, all right. I meant to say hot. <laughs> you don't think he looks very good in the pirate movies? Uh, the pirate movies it just doesn't do it for me anymore. Mm. Really? Why? No. Yeah. Twenty One Jump Street. I was like, hey, it's kind of hot. Yeah. It was well, he got old. In other words, that's why you don't think he's hot anymore. I don't know, now. but then he goes ahead so and he does. So you like little boys, is what you're saying? <laughs> hey, <laughs> it's just a mouth. Don't judge me. <laughs> I, th- I thought this was a judgment-free zone, dude. That's what you told me before you got here. Hey, bro. <laughs> what, what's up, brothers? <laughs> God. Not cool, bro. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, like, so, uh, Tone on Jump Street, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, those days. Yeah. Pool of blood shooting up towards the ceiling. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like he looks good. He's a distinguished uh, gentleman now. You know, he's he still, like, mumbles and everything else <laughs> like that. <laughs> I don't watch my movies. <laughs> Doing films and things. You know. He looks like but an old junkie uh, now, and he used to look like a young junkie. You prefer the young junkie look or the old junkie look? Only as it relates to Johnny Depp, I guess. I, should I guess say. the old junkies they have experience, yeah. <laughs> and they figured out how to make it work for them. <laughs> I like him now. I like him now because of the person that he's become, and because of the the things that he's done in his life. Like I, when I saw the the Hunter S. Thompson after he died, he wanted his. The fist, yeah, and his yeah, ashes yeah. blown, and that Johnny Depp was the only the one who took him seriously and actually did it for him. Yeah, I gained yeah. a whole. I, I think I didn't care about Johnny Depp before, and after that, I really liked him. Yeah. Because yeah. I think that's a really beautiful thing to do for somebody. I still think it's weird, although not entirely surprising, that Hunter S. Thompson killed himself. Like it, that's weird to me that he would do that. It sucks. It definitely because sucks. Because there will be no more Hunter S. Thompson books. Yeah. Ever? Or articles or rants. Yeah, or, it's yeah. A, it, that sucks. I you, it but sucks I'm not that he died before Twitter. It is a huge bummer. Yeah. Do you imagine Hunter S. Thompson? He, he would actually make Twitter time. worth looking at. Yeah. If he you don't think it's Twitter. worth looking at? Not really. No. no? Well, I mean, okay. I have my fucking LOL cats feed on Twitter that I really like, and I like good, to get good. drunk and flirt with people on Twitter occasionally. It's good. It's good. So that's fun. It's for fun for when I'm drunk and I like to rant about shit. But sure. other than that, no, it's like the biggest fucking. My, my 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 dead best friend put it best. He said that the English language is uh, the internet is destroying the English language uh, death by a thousand cuts. I think Twitter is disgusting. Wow. And you've said before that you live inside of Dana De Armand's asshole. I do. So what do you do <laughs> while she's tweeting? I'm happy that she's on Twitter. Okay. Because she's not killing. I mean, the you English screaming fr- Are you like do you peek out of the butthole and go, hey, knock that off up there, going back inside. No, I think that she's probably one of the only people who I actually like to follow on Twitter that I find to be, that I'm interested in what she has to say, that she's witty and she cares about being entertaining and she's she's an entertainer. So your argument really then, your argument is is that it's not so much the, um, it's not the medium, it's, it's the, the usage. It's oh, the yeah. content. It's oh, the yeah. usage. Yeah, and, and I not even all Hunter the usage. S. Thompson on there. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, see, that's the same thing that it's like, uh, you know, there was there's that time just post high school, uh, about two, three years out of high school, where I just couldn't listen to Marilyn Manson because they fucking hated his fans so much. Where I was like, I didn't even want to be associated. So it's like, and then and so I stepped away, come back a few years later. I'm like, the dude's been doing, been keeping it up. The yeah, shit's, there, he was it's great really at the fucking beginning. good. Do you remember at the beginning when there was the Manson family oh, hotline and you could call in and hear the fucking voice? We used to do, we used to get drunk in New York City and call in just to fucking hear the messages a billion years ago. Yeah. And then that stopped and it, he sucked. And then I went to see Nine Inch Nails and he opened yeah, yeah. and I was like, we're getting there late because we're fucking purposely missing Manson because he's a piece of shit. 
And then he got better after that. You didn't care for them back then. No, I, I did the same thing as you. I liked when he had the phone well, line that, where you could call in. Well, because I really saw him at the Nine Inch Nails cold. concert, and then I saw them. They came through Phoenix, uh, played this club called Club Rio, just before Smells Like Children was released, about three, four months before Smells Like Children was released. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was just so killer. It was such a great show and a tiny little club, and I really loved it. I think it was and that's the when same I got, thing like, for way, me, way into that it. it was the fans. And then Andy Christ, or... Um, yeah, Antichrist Superstar. That came out. That was an amazing fucking album. It was like you could not go anywhere. Yeah, you couldn't go anywhere really without hearing that. It pissed me off like because I was in high school and I was gothic, and then I was weird and an outcast, and my nickname was Satan, and everybody enjoyed shitting on me, and sure, I enjoyed misspelling there. their names in the yearbook. <laughs> good, good. And handing the little sticker to fix it when I handed out the yearbook. Here's your sticker. With your name on it. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Um, See, I didn't have that. I just had the first part. <laughs> I'm a, Until I went I'm to the second high school, person. I was okay. I'm a power play person. I always have been. More power to you. I mean, if you, if I had, I didn't have anything like that. They wouldn't have ever put me on the, the yearbook. They would have been like, no, we don't want this guy I was, spreading his uh, I was the copy editor. Words. I wrote every single word that was in my yearbook. Nice. Well, there you go. Um, so when Manson came out and all of a sudden everyone this wanted to be This is two lifeless right. fucks smiling outside the quad. <laughs> They're both going to die in a car fire. I hope. Lol. Anyway, there sorry. were a lot of pictures of me and the girls I thought were hot. It's good. But when when all of the little kids discovered Marilyn Manson and decided that they wanted me to be their queen all of a sudden and I was popular, mm -hmm. I was very against that idea. Sure. They didn't like me the way I was before. And just because some famous fucking person was doing it, suddenly I was acceptable. Fuck you. See, and I would posit that you carry on that that sort of uh, mentality insofar as like Twitter, where there's a sort of, not so much Twitter specifically, but insofar as uh, ig not ignoring the medium for the message kind but of the thing. People. You know what I'm saying? Like where it's, it's like, th look, yeah, there's a lot of people that talk like fucking morons on Twitter. I just don't ever read those. I read the people that I want to, you know, hear from, and I'm very amused by them, and it's wonderful. So I feel like, you know. I like being aggravated about shit. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. I'm, I'm <laughs> never gonna, never gonna downplay that. I, I have made a rule in my own life that I that I am now not allowed to dislike anything that I don't have a rant or a joke about. That's my new rule for myself. So now there's certain things I was just on the I don't like it side of things, but I didn't have like good reason. I just was like I don't know how I feel about. Is something bother that I have to just let go because there's no rant there. It's just sort of just something bothers me about that. Wisdom. I don't know. Yeah, I'd hate to, I, I'm not allowed to call it that, so I, I'll I, let you I, do I it. I think but. it is. I think you're just more mature. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what that is. I call it a motivation. It's a motivation to write, you know, more ranty shit. You know, there like you I, you know, I'm allowed to hate Kim Kardashian because I have, you know, I love on Kim her. Kardashian. Sorry to hear that. She's <laughs> fucking hot. She's hot, but I mean, you know, that's, that's, why that's I love about her. where we can end with it. That's, I mean, but I, but I don't get so women think she's hot. I don't, I don't think she's hot. She's fucking hot. So many hot. people. It's not even so much women. There, there, there are a lot of. I, I would just chew on her big ass. Wow. Uh, it's hard not to. Oh, God. Big piece of bubble gum sticking out there, taunting you. It's great. You just watch the show with the volume completely off. It's the same thing as porn. I would porn. never watch the show. The volume off. I feel like. Um, huh. It's the same kind of thing with Jersey Shore. It bothers me. <laughs> Those how people aren't hot, though. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is that, are that there are certain yeah, people. That it's, it's like almost everyone I know who watches Jersey Shore. I say, why? They say, well, it's just so bad. It's like a train wreck. It's... And I go, they don't care. They're millionaires anyway. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't care why you're watching it. They care that you're watching it. They're millionaires because of people like you who think it's a train wreck. And it's just so bad where I'm like, I I'm genuinely trying to fucking entertain people out there. And yeah. so I've made the joke, you've heard it before on stage, yeah. but yeah, maybe I should just go around and punch you all in the dick. I'll tell no jokes or I'll tell like really dumb like third grader jokes and then I'll come around and punch you in the dick. And you'll be like, that was a terrible show. I need to tell my friends about this. You got to see this guy. No, he's, he's a terrible comedian, but he'll punch you in the dick. I know it doesn't sound like a good time, but you just have to see it. It's like a train wreck. It just wouldn't work, though. What I'll would your you Jersey Shore famous. name be? Uh, the you know they have like, the little The Inconsideration is <laughs> probably what it would be. I like that. Yeah, thank you. Or The Inebriation. That was the other one. I was, <laughs> was kind of going. Usually, they they go hand in hand. The more drunk yeah. I get, the less I give a shit about people's feelings. Yeah. And I just have a tendency, like, 
It's like a my brain is like evil. It it just goes like let's think of like something really fucking mean to say all the time. And I'm just I I'm, I'm like I don't really think that, but it just would be funny if I was a complete asshole and I said that. And when I drink, I'm like I have to say it. It's on my mind anyway. And but I that's have the to, thing when you drink, like, you're not an asshole. Ah, says you. No, you're just lovably funny. That's well, it. Well, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Tell that to like you all of my exes. You guys can suck each other's dicks now. No, no, we'll no, wait we till later after the show. Oh. I don't wanna, yeah. yeah, I don't want to interrupt. When the we go into the third hour, that's yeah. why. Yeah, that's when the dick sucking starts. Yeah, yeah. We, we point the cameras it. at Bushka. Ooh, oh, I get to be on top tonight, by the way. All right. I, I was chafing uh, my neck last time. Yeah, I'm a little tired, anyways. So. All right, good. Yeah. All right, good. Good. <laughs> Just as long as we got that worked out. Just want to make sure that happened. Okay, so uh, moving <laughs> on to the news. Uh, I I really I, I don't know how this happened and I don't know if there's been uh, an update as to how it happened but uh, I'm sure this is in every sermon for the next uh, month. <laughs> a man caught fire uh, while jerking off in an adult store, <laughs> one of awesome. those arcade booth things. He was doing it right. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I have jerked off a lot, many times. But never set yourself on fire. Never even felt warmth. Maybe he was fucking a glory hole. And Not even corduroy. the warmth of my loving hand, <laughs> barely. I. It just says, Danger, Dangerfield said police, uh, whoa, Dangerfield, Lieutenant Troy Dangerfield said Thursday the man was seen ablaze and running out of the Golden Gate Adult no Superstore respect. in the city South Market neighborhood Wednesday night. Oh, wow. That's, uh, that's got to be a sight to see. Ah! That would be awesome. <laughs> just running out the store. It's like, Sir, what, <laughs> what happened? Uh. <laughs> Dangerfield said several onlookers attempted to help the burning man as he ran past them. He said a group of nearby firefighters eventually grabbed the man and extinguished the flames. The man whose name has not been released, he must love that. Did they pee on him? Was taken to St. <laughs> Francis Memorial Hospital after have. suffering severe burns over most of his body. Oh. Dangerfield said police do not know how the man caught fire. The incident is under investigation. Was he actually jerking off when he caught fire, or he was just in a porn store? Because people just don't walk no, around he porn was in stores. No, he was in the, like, arcade the booth. booth. He was okay. in the little, the little quarter booths. And the arcade? Think, yeah, the little arcade thing. And, uh, yeah, it, it's, I, I just, I don't even know. But you know that's going to be in every fucking sermon's like, well, I told you those gays are going to hell. God is now setting them ablaze <laughs> in the act. He's not waiting until eternity for all the damnation and hellfire. Not Hallelujah. Waiting until, May until that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now he's getting it done early. You know. Until what I mean? that preacher finds out it was actually his cousin. Yeah. You know, or something. Yeah. Or him. Or. <laughs> <laughs> of course. That's how it always works, isn't it? So it's, it's got to be the. Actual. So bored. <laughs> I need new material. Yeah, like I. <laughs> I'm just. I'm. I'm really the the visual of a man running out of a porn star just lit a blaze in San Francisco. I don't know why that matters, but it's, you know, it's got that small town vibe. Frisco. It's, it's got such a, you know, if that happened in the middle of like Tulsa, that guy'd be running like, till he fucking turned into a pile of ashes, really. Pretty much. <laughs> like nobody would be like, what was, oh, well. Eh. San Francisco, they care a little bit more. It's a compact community. They might be like, oh my God, we need to save yeah. them. You know, like, yeah. Been there, you know. Mm. No, it's like, <laughs> oh my God, was that at the Golden Gate uh, Adult Store? Oh, I told you that lube was dangerous. I was gonna say, was the lube flammable or something? Maybe. Is that new Trojan stuff that that warms up when yeah. you when you, when you stroke it's the it? It's warming lube. That shit. I, I Trojan needs to make a commercial so where you fucking light on fire from the... jerking off with their lube. I mean, I had I, I had like a lube years ago that was very similar to that, where like friction would warm it up. And you blow on it, it would cool down. It's yeah. very weird. It's very weird. So you had to like pump away, pull it up, blow on it, blow on it. All right, let's go. And it was uh, it was a very strange sensation. It's a lot easier just to have sex. Yeah, yeah think, probably. You know. <laughs> well, I don't. Like, man, I didn't use it for jerking off. Oh, oh. no, no, no. That's yeah. pointless. I just yeah, yeah fucking you know <laughs> whatever. Hey, it's can. it's pierced, so I, I got the two holes. So the pre cum is all I need, really. <laughs> it's just a constant. It just falls out the bottom the whole time. So I'm like, oh, good, I'm good to go. <laughs> it's like a very slow, convenient, slow dispenser. dripping spigot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's good to go. I don't. You have... guys did not talk to Dana like this when she was on your show, or you? She nervous. yeah, he wasn't here. It was very uh, difficult to get conversations going with Nat around. Uh, Nat has has severe ADD, and he was high and drunk. So like, we had a conversation. Oranges. To... Yeah. 
squirrel. <laughs> uh, we had a conversation about, I don't remember what the fuck it was. Something adult or whatever. And then we moved on to another conversation uh, for about 10 minutes. And then Nad goes, oh, 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 censorship. And I was like, because <laughs> we had talked about censorship 10 minutes prior. And he goes, censorship is like a blankety blank. And, and Dana gave him a cookie. So that was good. Or I think she promised him a cookie. I don't think she had any cookies with her. But that would have that would have saved him. So it was very difficult to get into like, you know, really disgusting really just conversation. getting into a conversation, <laughs> just picking the meat off the bone kind of stuff. That's why I'm saying she needs to come back on this show at some point. But um, I know she's a busy gal and everything else like that. But uh, gosh, where were we? Oh yeah, the spigots. Lube. Yeah, <laughs> spigots. <laughs> little about fiery, me. Fiery lube. Little, little yeah, about fiery, me. Yeah. That's all I'm just saying. Fiery you know. lube. I guess I should start uh, using my... My uh, penis is on fire. Wow, that's nutty. There we go. All Thank right. You. Yeah, got that going. <laughs> Forgot that I had my volume turned down. I'm sitting here using it just samples kind of, and they weren't working. It just kind of seemed like a Don Hertzfeld cartoon. <laughs> my penis is on <laughs> fire. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having trouble remembering the name Don, Don Hertzfeld. My anus is bleeding. Little oh yeah yeah yeah! Clouds. My anus is bleeding. Yeah. For yeah. the love of God, my <laughs> anus is bleeding. So uh, an enterprising uh, gentleman has decided that M Night Shyamalan needs to go back to film school. Oh, and oh what? It took how many movies for? What? And and he <laughs> and he wants to pay for it. Ah. That's uh, what he wants to spend his money on. Or not so much on. like he wants to pay for it, but rather at mnightschool.org, we're crowdsourcing enough money to send M. Night Shyamalan back to film school. <laughs> so he says, certainly there must be 150,000 of us film lovers out there who are tired of his schlocky plot twists, can dialogue, and over-commercialized images and auteur. If we all know da- if we all donate just $1, we can send M. Night back to NYU so he gets the help we all so desperately need. Let's make it happen so we can get him enrolled before he starts principal photography on 1000 AE. And so they're saying, basically, if they mm. gather enough money, they'll send him to film school. If he declines the uh, invitation, they'll send some random lucky schlub to film school. That's so cool. Really, Why don't I'll go. Way. Yeah. Kinda I'll right. go to fucking Tish. Thanks. Tish? That's what the film school is called at NYU. Okay. I didn't know this. I went to NYU. Did you? I did. For what? I went to Why? NYU for neuroscience. Mm-hmm. For neuroscience. I was going to go for Tish, but I decided that I didn't want to be broke, so I didn't want to make film. Mm. Yeah, but I had times. my application prepared. So why are you not a neural scientist? Because I didn't want to sign my name to the same ledger as those people. I don't like them. This is, again, This is you see, we're coming right back to it. It's like Twitter and Marilyn Manson all over again. I'm an elitist, yes. Yeah. You I'm see? a snotty bitch. You get, you get people involved that she doesn't like, and she just loses interest. Yep. Surely there has to be people in the porn industry you fucking hate. Or does your desire to be in the porn industry supersede the elitism? Um, I think that my closest friends will recount that I rant about people in the porn industry that I hate pretty much fucking constantly. Mm-hmm. Um, Kimberly Kane is fond of calling me fire and ice because I get really fucking amped about it. You need to get her on the show, too. And I have seen her since awesome. Salvation. I, I yell about uh, how I'm really angry at people who work in porn, and then when I see them, I don't fucking talk to them, and I give them the cold shoulder, hence the ice portion of the fire. Right, right, right. I got you, I got you. I am, uh, I am very frustrated with people who make porn and who suck at it, who are unhappy to be at work. Mm-hmm. That pisses me off. It's yeah. like the greatest job. It is the greatest job. Um, and Not for dudes, but go for it. No, it is. It's a better job for dudes because they get directing jobs just because they have a penis, and women have to fucking wait in line or beg and scrape for work when their films are notably and. I could see the director gig being kind of cool, superior. but ugh, I couldn't imagine somebody like yelling, "Come on, you gotta come! Don't come! Come! Don't come! Come over here! Come over there! Don't come on this!" And you came on yeah. my suitcase, and I oh, don't. Oh, and, and somehow well, it's better for girls to be told, "Push your leg back." Further, 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 further. See how far you can get it. Well, look, I'm not saying that there isn't downsides to everything. I'm just saying that, that you know, when it comes to men, it, you know, they get paid less. They have to, you but know, But they work more, but more. they work more often, and they don't time out the way that women do. Time out, what do you mean? Uh, they, uh, they can still work when they're 40. They can still work when they're 50. They can pretty much work for as long as they're willing to shoot well, their Well, these days, up. so can women. Just different, it just becomes a different fetish. 
It's not Let's you. You can't work every single day when you're 40 and you're a woman. But if you're 40 and you're a man, you can work every single day. Hmm. I don't know. I, I don't. do. Okay. I like the I like the uh, quote unquote milf porn. Much as I hate that fucking term, but I, I'm I get Why into do it. Why do you like milf porn? I have no idea. I literally I watched one once. I uh, think that your cat likes milf porn. Also, there's an erection oh, yeah, going yeah. on here. Bushka's big on milf porn. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, Easy porn. So when when I was when I was working at uh, Music Plus TV and we had we allowed video uploads, somebody uploaded the entirety like a like an hour and a half long movie that was a milf flick. And, uh, and I was like, what is this? I knew it was porn within like five seconds. But yeah. I was like, well, take a look. I'm bored. And I, I was sitting there. And, and the thing is, I've worked in porn for so long, making websites. And, and uh, how you and I met is I was making Julie Simone's DVDs and things like this. Fantastically authoring DVDs. Well, thank you. You hear that, everybody? I fantastically author. Because we're going to get to that in a minute. You're pretty fast, too. Oh, I try to be. Um, I'm very thorough. He's thorough, and from what I understand from Julie, you're easy to work with. She's very particular about what she wants, and apparently you are, are very kind and nice regarding that. She always said very nice things about working with you. I would hope so. We still work together. We just uh, emailed back and forth uh, this morning, actually. I believe I'm it. I'm still working on uh, stuff for her. So, uh, Anywho, so in all the years of working in porn, it's, it's shapes and colors. Like, I don't, like, I didn't get hard when I was going uh, fetish cash or vivid or... God's Girls or uh, Julie Simone stuff. All of it was just, you know, shapes and colors. Um, and so I, here I am at work, you know, in a non-porn company. First one I've had a job. First, actually, first design job that wasn't related to porn in my life. And I'm watching this thing, and I'm like, and it's this older Asian woman, giant tits. And she she's invites the guy in, and she's like, oh, Steve's out. Why don't you come in and, you know, sit on the couch and whatever, and... And he's just sitting on the couch, and she's, she's Jewish and Asian. Yeah, ow! <laughs> <laughs> ow! You want some? You want some pussy, do you? Ow! Oh my god! She must be doing well. That's, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. really. It's a niche, yeah. Yeah, it is. Jewish Asian uh, Milf. big titted milfs. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So she she just pops a tit out, and yeah. I was like immediately hard, and I was like, I, why am I into this? Fucking weird. So sometimes you just have to you turn off the brain and fucking just get one done. So I got home and I had to like watch the rest of that fucking movie and jerk off to it. Like I was like, I can't wait to get home. Like it was Won't really the teaser. Like the first time that I've ever thought that in my life. And I was like, God, I have, I guess I have a thing for the, for the, for the milk porn. Um, uh, it, it makes sense no idea in why. relation to your earlier um, comments about women in positions of sexual power mm-hmm. and, and not in a dominatrix way, just in that, Explain a muffin. Milf porn. Mm-hmm. It's appropriate and acceptable for the woman to be the sexual aggressor, not in a beating way, sure. but in a, in in an attitude way, in a sure. in, in a in a physical removing the men's clothes and all all that sort of way. Whereas mm. teen porn or maybe also regular porn, it the male is supposed to be the aggressor mm. the whole time. Yeah, yeah. I usually end up feeling bad for the girls in those. Yeah. You and it, who who wants to feel bad for a fucking chick when they're watching porn? You want to be like, that chick's fucking hot and horny, and if she were in my house, she would be doing the same thing, because yeah, that's yeah. her attitude towards sex. Yeah. So it reflects a really positive attitude towards sex, I think. Well, good. I have a positive <laughs> attitude yeah. towards sex. No, I, I take it... I, I, Gilf porn, a whole other fucking oh, story. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not, not into that at all. Actually, I was supposed to make... Uh, I was supposed to make a uh, an older broad site at the fetish company I worked at my first uh, porn design job mm-hmm. and uh, older broad and uh, it was like it was like sixty and above or whatever and I had made some mock ups and shit and I just couldn't wait to make banners because I had the perfect tagline what what <clears throat> come and get some prune tang. <laughs> Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's disgusting, Mitch. Well, I'm just upset somebody else took it, okay? Right. Somebody else took that from me. I saw a site um, use that Must years have been later. the Germans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah only, it would oh, only probably. be the, more the Japanese. prunes, I go one yeah. way. You know, yeah, I'm yeah. like, ah, oh, okay, regularity. <laughs> ah, yes, prune. Is it sauerkraut? Oh, you just <laughs> made a scat porn reference. Very nice. Scheiße <laughs> is good. Scheiße. Um, I was talking to someone about the different genres, age genres of porn, and we were trying to mm-hmm. figure out what it was 
with gilf porn and i postulated that it was the opposite of milf porn that it's more like little girl porn where they're so old and desperate and feeble like the same reason that people rape 90 year old women because they can't get away like a like a man bites dog where he's sitting on the couch and he scares the fucking like uh, grandmother to death and he only robs old people because they're an easy target so i think it's an easy sexual target and my friend simplified it she said it's actually the gum jobs it's gummer you think so hmm, hmm. i trying to think because uh, i was listening to uh the jim jeffries eddie if podcast uh called talking shit and they had this guy on there uh paul Provenza brought on his like some kid that he hangs out with and he's like this kid dates 60 year old women he's like into the older broads yeah. okay perfect so what did he say about why unfortunately the kid was one of these um he was weird but he also knew he was weird so he kind of took on a further affectation to be even weirder oh and so he yeah. was like really overdoing it you know what i mean like really like every time they tried to get into his head about it he would be like, yeah, I like the granny pussy, you could do gummer, you know, and all this different <laughs> stuff. And you were like, all right, let's, let's get down. Like, we're trying to study you here. And clearly Paul Provenza was on the same mindset, was like, I want to get into this dude's head. Because it's so interesting. It is. Because I would it love really to have that Because it really might be man bites dog, but sexually. Yeah, I, I really don't know I, I, any number of weird, I don't know. I, it's hard to postulate why people like a lot of things. You know, I, I've... I, I've driven myself sick trying to think like, well, why does somebody like this or that or whatever have you? You know, it's uh, I don't know. It, it, yeah, that's I, I feel like just the gummers, though. I feel like that's not enough. You know what I'm saying? Because you could just as easily go for crack horse. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Ja well, OK, no, because sometimes crack whores only have one tooth and that's even worse. Than a whole <laughs> but she's a crack whore. You right? No, but right? she's a just crack whore, so you can knock that out. Completely... Yeah, you just knock that last one out. She's not, she's a crack whore. What's she gonna do? Go to the cops? Come on. Just, I guess if you're you already there, knock that one out. You're like, look, this is really ruining it for me. We need to get uh, rid of that. Just come here. I'm gonna tie this string to a doorknob. <laughs> you stand over there. <laughs> oh, I gotta go rub it. one out. <laughs> yeah. I think hey, you just uh, drove your friend off. Fill me up. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's cool. I know you got to go to the bathroom. I, I don't know how much more disgusting this experience could get. We still have Are you really not having a good time? I'm having this? a fantastic okay. time. I just can't believe how disgusting you are today. Today? Mm -hmm. I guess we haven't had a lot of, like, uh, I got Yeah, I haven't seen you. I haven't seen you in a while. I forgot how disgusting. Uh, we usually had, like, business conversations prior to this. Because yeah, it was, like, true. working on Julie Simone stuff. And that's what I was going to get into. Because it seemed like I thought that you were basically, like, friend slash roommate. And you yeah. were like, oh, well, I'll help her out with these films because I don't have to actually do anything. I just beat the fuck out of people and make out with hot chicks. No, I, I produced the movies with her. Right. I mean, she directed them and wrote them. Sure, sure. But I guess what I'm saying is there wasn't, there wasn't so much a requirement on your behalf to do anything um, uh, porn-like. You know what I'm saying? It, I'm trying to think uh, of how to phrase it because uh, I, I don't mean it in any sort of uh, negative are, way. Her movies are erotic art. Right. I mean, they're porn. Obviously, they're porn. Sure. You, people jerk off to them. You can jerk off to them. They're very sexualized movies that have vaginas and penetration and BDSM mm -hmm. and sexual that, situations. Yeah. Um, but she she slaves over the lighting and the editing. They're 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 high art porn movies. Yeah, I mean, she gets. I mean, it's it's interesting to me. It's like what she would call me up, you know, because she hand me the files for DVD and I like never watched them I didn't have time I was like I'm <laughs> making the I'm putting all the footage on the DVD sure. she needs it in two days you're working to a deadline of course yeah. it's like I don't have time to you watch you can't be this. distracted by jerking off to porn it's not even I, I really just couldn't you know and I've told her before I was like I couldn't jerk off to any of this like I mean I'm, I, I'd be fascinating you know I'll watch it as a sort of film but once the sex scene comes I'm like skip you know because I and what am I going to watch somebody get whipped for a half hour I can go to Bar Sinister and see that every uh, week so her movies are 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 definitely more than whipping. No, I know. I'm Especially just I'm just saying that it doesn't do anything ones. for me, so I, I wouldn't watch the sex scenes because it would just be like, all right, well, I get it. More of the same, blah, 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 and I'd move on. But, for instance, Audition, which still, like, I, I still stands out in my head. Like, it, I wouldn't say it disturbs me, but, I, like, I, I found myself quoting the movie recently where I was like... <laughs> I was, I was talking to somebody, and I and I took on the what's her name, Gia Paloma. Took on the Gia Paloma voice of like, "You're gonna be great, really great," and like I had that vision in my head of like the before after where they show like where yeah, she shows the, the flashback of her going, "You're gonna be really great after you got like violently beaten, raped for like three days or whatever." It's beautiful. And 
so yeah, that was like, she's very like into the story. So every time I did one of the DVDs, she's like, "Did you watch it?" I was like, "Yeah, I caught a few parts." She's like, "What did you think of the story?" Like it was very like, "Did you catch the deeper? Did you catch the nuances of what I was going for?" So yeah, that's why I like her stuff. My uh, so so basically, it seemed like you were kind of like, "All right, you know, I'll, I'll hang out. I'll help you produce the thing. I'll be in a couple scenes. I'll I'll beat a bitch up. Oh no, I paid for half of those smack movies. a dude up. What you know what I'm saying? The point is that that as far as action on screen." Mm-hmm. Uh, it you didn't like um, it. At least it didn't seem like. And again, I didn't really watch them that much. But it didn't seem like you were doing like insertion things like that. You were mostly like just dominatrix come in, beat somebody up, or or smack no, somebody around, whatever. No, there was there was insertion. You. Okay, so then it went from that to then I then then you're doing like actual porn, and you got an AVN award apparently. I, I did. understand. I did. I've been nominated a bajillion times. I couldn't possibly recount the nominations for you, but I got an AVN award for Thank a you. scene that I did. With Belladonna and actually Kimberly Kane. Nice. Yeah. So do you, do you hang that up on the mantle and shit? It's in my apartment somewhere. Really? It's not one of those things that you like hold as a shining example of a thing done right? Oh, yeah, sure. Of course it is. That that was a beautiful scene. Right, That's a gorgeous I'm, fucking scene, and I'm sure a lot of people love it. I feel like if I got like some sort of comedy award, it'd be on a shelf here at the apartment. I have it on or a like shelf. Or like a glass case. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have it on a you shelf. You said it's somewhere in the apartment. Yeah, so well, I have a lot of shit in my apartment. So do you, what, what did you get the award for then? For um, best all-girl three-way for a scene that I did with Belladonna and Kimberly Kane. Now, this is going to sound like a bit, but I mean it sincerely. How the fuck does one judge that? What is the, how would you, what do you call best? Is it like this got me harder than any other scene that we saw that was up for it? Or what? I mean, yes, do you I even know? I don't pretend to know how those people think. Okay, all right. I thought it, I don't know. I try not to get too drunk at those awards. Probably for the best. Yeah, because I, I say everyone's fucking quiet and I get drunk and they always put me in the front and I say whatever fucking retarded shit I feel like saying. Well, you get some good comedians stopping by there, so you're lucky on that. You get to see That's a good show. true. That's true. There are some good comedians yeah. that are on the stage. It is fun to hang out in the lobby and drink scotch and smoke pot with my friend Sid and hang out and not be allowed to have sex in the bathroom. Jesus Christ, Justin. What did you just drink that was <coughs> sour <coughs> up your nose? Oh, what happened? <laughs> I thought he was really offended like, that I was smoking pot with like, one of my dyke like friends in the rum lobby. Coke. No. It tastes like He's it. trying to get or you drunk. Or did you put the rum on top? He's trying to get you drunk so you don't fuck him in the ass too hard I later. rolled it a little bit. I don't, I don't know if it's... He's trying to roll you. Yeah. Well, well, that's why I... He I doesn't need to get me drunk for that. Come on, I know this guy for a while. He's trying to roll you a little bit. Hey, guys. Yeah. Hey! Don't give away my hey. secrets. Um, Come on. That's true. I think that the award that I would be really interested in receiving would be a feminist porn award because I think that those that committee uh, really closely judges and cares about the product that they're reviewing how does ellen judge i that? think that i think that <laughs> i know i think that avn just they look at such a large volume yeah that how like you said like how do you judge all these fucking scenes right i think that um feminist porn awards are a more specialized thing now are they looking for this this put this puts the female in a good light and you know what I'm saying? Like, is it stand up for? It the, is, is it sort of like stands up for the feminist cause? It in is a way? female sex positive, but it's not so much so pretentious, so that they don't recognize uh, movies that are made by women that have boy girl scenes in them. Tristan Tarmino's recognized a lot of her stuff as boy girl. Sure. Um, and they also recognize that uh, female sexual submission can be very empowering, and that there's absolutely nothing wrong with being a woman and being a feminist and liking to be submissive in bed. Which I very much enjoy that they feel that way because. I'm a girl top and I like girl bottoms and I don't think there's anything wrong with no, my no. girl bottom lovers and I respect them and I love them and I cook for them and I hold hands with them and I kiss them and then I punch them in the face before we I fist them. Sure, sure. Yeah. I call it Thursday. You yeah. call it, you know, Tuesday. whatever. You, yeah, Tuesday. Yeah. All right. You know. I feel like I save it for the, you know, towards the end of the week. feels like a prize that way, you know, something Tuesday to work morning. towards. Tuesday morning. That's my favorite story. Tuesday? Okay. Tuesday yeah. morning for you as well. I All mean, right. it depends on how old I might have to is. try it Tuesday. I, I just felt like, you know, give myself a reward towards the end of the week. All right. All right. Yeah, it's like uh, I, I say really depraved shit for the end of the week. I mean, then the fucking the needles and the fucking saline inflation bags <laughs> and all that shit are coming out on the yeah. weekend. Yeah, it's good. You got saline inflation bags too. Yeah. You get the foreheads all big. Put a dent in there. Put the um, little donut. Generally, I do squirrel sacks, but squirrels. Right, right. But I mean, it I depends. couldn't imagine like that would freak me out to like look down and have giant nuts. Also, putting a needle anywhere near my balls would be. Uh, 
I'm, I, hypodermic needles kind of freak me out, but I do have I, I do have them. Like activity. I have the, the play piercing needles, and they're fun and shit like that. Yeah. Um. Uh. But but I, you know, they're they're rel- relatively thick gauge insofar as if it was a hypodermic needle, they'd be pretty fucking thick. But right. they're they're still thin enough to where they're not piercing needles. You know, you couldn't pierce somebody with them. But right. Um. Yeah, I was gonna say I have that book. Um. You you probably read it. Yes means yes. No, I haven't read no. that one. Oh, it's kind of a, it's a weird book. It's it's good, but it's not, it, it has a central theme, but it doesn't have a progressive, I don't want to say narrative, but even like a moral narrative. You know, like when you read a book about a given topic, as you get through the book, you become more um, enlightened or whatever have you, more knowledgeable about the subject. Okay. This book is a series of blog posts from different authors, basically. Oh, that's fine. All about yes means yes. Um and uh, female empowerment and uh, things like that. The, the basic idea of the book is the is the sex positive. It's it's the saying that uh, what is it? Um, there's an actual term they use instead of um, instead of teaching women, you know, or instead of teaching society rather that it's 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 say no if you don't want it. It's say yes if you do. It's uh, God. There's a phrase and it's killing me that I can't think of it. Uh, enthusiastic consent. I like that. Yeah. So it's all about enthusiastic consent. The whole book really goes around enthusiastic consent. Um, That's why I really enjoy it. But it's a bunch of blog entries from a bunch of different authors. So it doesn't progress in a sense. You don't necessarily feel like, oh, now I'm getting more information about this subject. You're just now seeing a slightly different viewpoint from somebody else. But they do talk about like bondage and things like that and submissive. In fact, that's the first chapter is all about that. And uh, yeah, I've done a lot of the. I like feminism studies. I'm still sort of working on this book that I haven't figured out which direction it'll go in. Because um, originally it started out as like a book about like um, sex in the modern age, if you will, and relationships mm-hmm. and dating and stuff like that. Because I'm just so fascinated by people's psychology in that. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, then it turned into a book, kind of about like like mainstream feminism, more or less, Mm -hmm. and sort of like to some degree trying to steer the feminism bus onto more sane roads. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To a more humanist approach rather than a feminazi approach, which can be very... Off-putting. Yeah, one of my friends commented on the feminist porn awards as uh, those bunch of fucking dykes. And I was like, ah, okay. (laughs) I guess they are a bunch of fucking dykes, but they're really nice people, and most of them... I think would err on the side of humanist. Right, right. Well, that's just if you really looked at their philosophy, it's more humanist than it is feminist necessarily. Yeah, that's. I think that's the side that people don't see. The side that people uh, are so quick to be like, "Oh, that doesn't exist." Feminists well, all all hate men or whatever have you. Why is it called 70s, feminist and not humanist? In the seventies, the the really popular feminist manifestos and that exist to this age, as as people remember, the popular feminist manifestos sure, are like sure. the Scum Manifesto. Right. Right. Which, right? It's, is, it's is, all that is, kind of thing. Which is my kind of train wreck that I like to look at. <laughs> I think that the Jersey Shore is a really passe train wreck because I grew up in Jersey. But the Scum Manifesto to me is a real fucking train wreck. And if people want a train wreck, they should look at that instead. Right, right. Well, I think it's 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 the it's the thing of like people go, oh, why isn't it called humanist or why you know, it's this kind of thing where they assume that it's it's anti male because. I think that and it's not. It, it's the same kind of thing that you find in uh, race relations as well. Yeah. Is it sort of it's there? There's sort of a tendency where you have to have a certain amount of retaliation before you can start working on the equality. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like, and that's sort of a question I've had for my just in general uh, myself and otherwise. Feel free to weigh in. Is can there be equality without any retribution of any kind? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because if you've been a part of a repressed class for so long, do you go, hey, we're peaceful and loving, you know, hey, you know, let us just do our thing. Or do you, beat or the do door you down? first have to kind of beat the shit out of people so they'll listen and then go, all right, all right, the fighting's over. Let's calm it down. Let's get, let's get real. Well, now you're like Malcolm X versus Martin Luther King in it. Right. Right. Which is a, but I think which is a had, very noble conversation you had, in comparison. But you, had both, but you had to have both, I feel like. If you just had one or just had the other, it would, be go, it would go terribly. But it's, it's basically, it's so far as I don't give, I don't, I don't give women shit. Uh, I don't give feminists shit, necessarily, for pointing out various uh, 
patriarchal injustices where it's like, oh, well, that's the patriarchy doing. Like, I don't necessarily call them out and go like, oh, now you're being an uppity bitch because it's like, as well, you, they, you might have a good point. As here. long as they agree that most of the misogyny, especially in Los Angeles, is perpetrated by women towards other women. As that's long as they it, understand yeah. that and they're willing to concede that women aren't perfect creatures, that women are just as responsible for our system as men are. I mean, and that's that's the, talking about matriarchal societies and feminism. Um, when, b- before the Homo sapiens and Neanderthals bred together, as now we know by scientific research that they did breed together, and that all people are part, not only Homo, sa- homo, homo sapien, but also part Neanderthal, um, in those primitive societies that were uh, matriarchal societies because the men were off hunting. Sure. And the women were at home making babies and dealing with each other, like it, it, the, uh, not like lions, but you know, because sure, obviously sure, the lioness yeah. did the hunting. But um, women were, that's where cattiness comes from. It's genetically bred into women because right. you had to agree with the other women in your tribe or they would fucking kick you out and you would die in the wilderness by yourself. Yeah. And that's why women talk nice to each other's faces and shitty behind each other's backs because it's a it's a survival fear instinct it's not out of love or beauty it's out of fear and it's disgusting so i think any just purely feminist culture is it's flawed without being humanist because of because of the way that human beings are in terms of our 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 breeding nature and our societal nature and our cultural nature and that most feminists like to fuck men right right and they want men to be attracted to them. And they wear lipstick and they wear high heels. And they, you know, even if they feel like they should be paid just as much as men, well, men should still look at them and they should still be sex objects. Well, it's it's the kind of thing where I, I, I've, I've seen it happen where in, uh, women will casually get interested in feminism. And they'll read your basic, you know, articles of confederation, if you will. <laughs> uh, and they'll, they'll read the various things. And immediately, it's the, right out the gate, all men are scum and then they have to dial it back to deal with the oh well wait i don't actually buy buy that because well i have a boyfriend or because you know i still think this dude's hot and i want to you know fuck this you know whatever the hell yeah and so they have to dial it back and there's this weird sort of dichotomy at least internally where they they get into a place where it's like well it's too absolutist, I guess I should say, where it's like it becomes a situation where they go well i either go full feminism and hate dudes or I go laid. right back and pretend <laughs> I didn't read this at all and all feminists are, you know, uppity bitches mm-hmm. that haven't gotten laid in a while. And that's the problem is that, that our society likes these black and white things, like yes. where it's all this or all that. And so that's why I was saying the book kind of steered towards, like, teaching men and women sort of some feminist things, some mainstream feminist things so we could all sort of get along. But then I got into another thing where it was like, well, maybe the book should be about, like, the history of relationships and where they might be going and sort of just exploring how weird it is right now. Cause so we're it all in a goes very back strange to parenting. Place. It basically. is really, <laughs> it is really fucking weird right now. Isn't it? And Male I think and female relations are at, are at a peak of really awkward and fucking weird right now. We're at you and I and, and Justin, we're at, we're at this, our generation is at this weird fucking crossroads where it's like we grew up, where during a cultural shift as we got older. Yeah. So it's like it, I get into this fucked up thing where I can remember, for instance, this will sound like a, just a sex joke, but I, there's a point here. When I was 17, I hooked up with this girl who was like 25, and it was the first girl who ever like gave me head and then swallowed, said just in no, no big deal, didn't make an issue of it, wasn't like, oh, God, you know, didn't need water, just fucking... And I was so impressed. I was like, wow, that's what it's going to be like when I hook up with 25-year-olds. I can't wait till I get <laughs> into my 20s. And then, uh, and it, it did turn out that as I got older, more women were doing that. But, like, I could bang a 19-year-old tomorrow and she'll, be, she'll do that. You know what I'm saying? Whereas they were not doing that when I was 19. They were still come as icky. So it's like there's, a, there's been a maturation of society as well as the people that I've dealt with because I've gotten older and they've gotten older. I think you know that's what I'm really nice that you are seeing that positive <laughs> side of the over-sexualization of our culture. You are you, are you, are you, are you about I to suggest that's... a negative side to it? Yeah. Okay, please do. Yeah, I'm, I'm suggesting that women don't, intim- like, don't intimacize sex as much as they used to because they can watch so much fucking porn on the internet and women are starting to objectify sex 
in the same way that men can, but women are taking it a fucking step further. They're objectifying other people and themselves, and it's becoming a very dark and very negative and self-effacing objectification process. I feel like talking to, to and, and here's, here's what's so interesting about our generation and the cultural shift is I did uh, a mainstream porn radio show. I talked to you about it recently. Yeah, yeah. And I got to interview a bunch of young porn girls, and I just want to fucking pick their brains. Right, right. Bring because them on here. I do, too. I did not watch <laughs> porn <laughs> when things. I was 14 years old, but that's because I couldn't watch porn when I was 14. And if I did get porn when I was 14, it was like Zazel and latex, like really beautiful, stylized, gorgeous fucking porn. And they're watching like disgusting gonzo on the Internet. Sure, yeah. sure. And they're not romanticizing or fantasizing porn. They're animalizing porn. And women animalizing sexuality has never happened in the history of of human sexuality it, to the extent that it's happening now. And these girls are sexually empowered. They make $1,000 a day. Some of them work every single fucking day of the week. And they're like, porn is fucking awesome. I got herpes. Who cares? I have fucking anal warts. Oh, it's fine. Oh, I don't want to pick them anymore. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a woman and it's my right to act this way because I see other women doing it on the internet. Well, I can remember, like, for instance, the first porn I ever saw. I was fucking, like, 18. Um... And my stepdad had like a box of I got heavy VHS into porn tapes. when I started working in the sex industry because we would sit around the dungeon and right. fucking well, watch when, porn. When was the first porn you saw? Or actually, let me let me pose to you a different question because this is one that always fascinates me. Is it seems like guys growing up there there is no shortage of, of it, it's there's got to be a guy going around to every town and leaving porn in the woods or the yeah. dumpster. There yes. has to be one guy who's and doing. And girls weren't. Picking yeah. through the porn in the dumpsters, but so it's now like, they as are. A, as, a, as a young kid, I saw plenty of pussy and, and titties in magazines and whatever have right. you. Not and so I, much in film, but in, you know, it, but there are, in movies you do see titties, but girls don't see dicks everywhere. No. So it, it occurs to me that it probably happens that women have seen, by the time they see their first dick in person willingly, there's not many dicks to, to compare it to, if any. Now that they there even is. Know. Well, yeah, now sure. There is, but, but I'm when saying, we like, for up, your, no, but I, I'm specifically talking about you. Mm -hmm. How did they, did you did you see a lot of dicks like in magazines or whatever have you? No. Obviously, they're not in film and shit. Is the other side of it? There's not a lot of dicks in film. Nope. So it's like, did you do? I mean, did you the first dick you saw was it in a magazine or in person? In person. Really? Yep. First time you saw a dick, and you were like, "That's crazy." For years and years and years and years and years. Yeah. Wow. Did it scare you? I mean, were you like, what the, what is this business all about? <laughs> what? Tell me about your business, sir. Not really. I no. mean, I come from a very sex positive household. Well, I'm just thinking if so the first time I saw a like... pussy was when I was face to face with it, I would be, I don't know what I would have thought. I had, I, had, I had time in my youth to, you know, intimate myself with the, the stylings of the vaginal world. I had a vaginal world. brother and... Okay. I mean, my parents were very cool. Still are really fucking cool about bodies and sex. They're, they're, they're Nudists, like, I guess. they're no, they're like sixties. <laughs> they're sixties fucking hippie Jesus freaks. They're uh. super lovey. They're really rad. Like the church that I grew up in when I was a kid had uh, transsexuals back, obviously in the eighties before there was the hormones. So like just cross dressers and sure, gay sure. couples and my parents pointed at gay couples and they said some ladies like ladies and some men like men i said okay yeah and, and they pointed story. at transsexuals and they said some men are born women and some women are born men i said okay that'd be a little harder to grasp i think i don't know as a kid maybe you just accept i'm very it, gender androgynous so i completely yeah no that's i'm not saying there's anything wrong it. with it i just literally i feel like i might go wait i have questions now oh yeah and i did and they answered all the questions that i had in really calm and Cool. Yeah, my sister used to dress me up like a girl. I was in the Girl Scouts. I believe that. Yeah, I went around it selling cookies in the sense. skirt and everything. You have a lesbo vibe going on. Yeah, I get yeah. It. I'm a I'm a real Butch Dyke man. You I'm are. I gotta tell you. You're a Butch Dyke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Although I still like makeup, so you know, I can go lipstick lesbian sometimes. It's cool. You know, it happens. It happens. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't remember if I, if we were going someplace else with that. I have more news. I should probably turn on the. Uh, should probably turn on our uh, our Skype here and see if we can't get some calls going on. Yeah, uh, is anyone saying anything in the chat room? 
Dana was talking earlier. She was she was laughing at your bear trap comment. Oh, that I'm a bear trap. <laughs> <laughs> she just wrote bear trap we, and I kind of thought, like, you know. <laughs> she likes my bear trap. Like, I couldn't See, really. See, if I live in Dana's asshole, she lives inside my bear trap. She digs it. Naturally, naturally. All right, we are uh, taking calls here at uh, 310. Yay, Riff! Or if you're on Skype, you can try the uh, screen name STR8 R I F F I N, straight Riffin. Um, if you're in California, it'll be a free phone call. And uh, probably really anywhere if you have a cell phone, that it's nationwide free call. Yeah, yeah that's it's true. A, who doesn't? So chances are you're fine. It's not like a. It's not a toll number, so to speak. It's uh, just a regular ass phone number in California. Three one zero. Yay, Riff! Feel free to call whenever and interrupt and say talk some shit and, and whatever have you. I feel like I had another article. Um, ah, here we go. Bill Clinton got a lot of shit for uh, some remarks he made about Times Square uh, recently. If I can pull the thing up. Oh, it I'm sure he has a fucking <laughs> opinion on the subject. I love that man. I miss him. He's I a do. pussy hound. I miss him. I miss him. Look, everybody's got to have their passion. All right. I'm not. I'm not here to. I'm not here to judge. Let a let a guy hold cabinet meetings and whip his dick out. You know, he was he was all right by me. Let's uh, see his uh, his actual quote. <laughs> That's was, why I uh, like working in porn because people just whip their dick out if they feel like it. It's not a repressed situation. How you doing? It's measure. Yeah. <laughs> Asked if he had any memories of the area before it was sanitized and later pedestrianized, he said, When I was 18 Whoa. years old in November of 1964, a freshman at Georgetown, I first went to Times Square. I bought a steak at Tad's Steakhouse. I heard a guy ream his mother out, poor wor working woman, because she'd given him a hi-fi instead of a stereo speaker. I remember everything about it. I saw a hooker approach a man in a gray flannel suit. Pretty heady stuff for a guy from Arkansas. Yes, look, I still have vivid memories of it. Romantic. Fascinating. So now everybody's like, he was romanticizing hookers. I like, I likes to get freaky. What can I say? Sweet, you know, hookers. Hookers, pot, fat chicks, Twinkies, what? You got problems? We didn't have problems when he was president. We could take the feminist argument so many places right there. Go Hillary, ahead. Hillary Clinton and fucking people considering being interested in Hillary Clinton as a politician makes you a feminist, which I think is complete bullshit. Yes. Go. Um, and that somehow she was a feminist because she stayed with a philandering husband for her fucking political career, which I also think is complete bullshit. You think she didn't do that, or you think it's not she feminist? She did that. It's not feminist. Okay. At all. I, I don't think, think it is either. I think I that's what she did as a person. That's what she chose to do for her career. It was a power because play, she knows yeah. It was a power play. And people consider women doing things doing making power play as being a feminist which is fucking bullshit it has absolutely nothing to do with feminism at all in fact yeah. in her case it was the fucking opposite of feminism because men are allowed to get divorced and still hold fucking uh offices in politics but women definitely fucking not yeah i don't know i feel like if she would have divorced him i feel like she we would have forgotten about her. I feel no. I feel like she could. No, struck, we would have forgotten I, about. In her. my head, no, she could have no struck out on her own. She could have gone out and been like, "Look, this is how it goes down now. I don't put up with shit." You saw, I didn't just stick with a dude for my political no, career. Do you remember like, when I, we were... I'm, I'm out strong woman. Maybe. I'm doing it on my own. Maybe okay. you're right. No I don't know. Maybe no I'm way. over. Ex over. Do you remember uh, when we were kids and she was fucking baking cookies and trying to up her feminist image, her, her female image? I, I think that not. she's a fucking cookie baker. I look. This is this is this is what I I keep wishing for us to get back to a time when we didn't give a fuck who was president. I miss those days. I don't know if they'll. I don't think they'll ever come back. But that's what I was hope. That was my biggest hope for. Why? Well, because everything was good. No, just when we did didn't, we not we give a fuck? Because we were kids, no, <laughs> and kids. all we wanted to do was play. Yeah, <laughs> no, I think it was fucking I think and spin a, and fucking nerds candy. Look, there's 24 hour news, which has a huge effect on it. Agree, there huge, wasn't 24 hour effect. news when we were right. kids. I, I think there was less scrutiny of every little goddamn thing a president did. I just was hoping that that basically that that was my hope for the Obama thing was that he could sort of fade off, and we'd only hear about it when some shit went down. Which is, I was an adult during the, Bill Clinton's presidency, and you only heard about him when some shit went down. It's and information, I like that. man. It's, yeah. the, it's the internet. But I everything. don't need to, yeah, but it's like, we don't need to be living up his ass, so to speak. You know, I just feel like, you know. Why now, not? And my, my analogy was that George Bush, I tried to do that, but he was like the neighbor's yapping dog. Where it's like, dude, fucking somebody shut that fucking dog up. Yeah, he's an idiot. I'm trying to sleep. You know what I mean? 
And he yeah. was out there just being fucking, you know, you know, sniffly George nuclear, you know, and uh. <laughs> so I was that's what I was kind of hoping for with the Obama thing is I feel like just let the fucking let the guy do his thing or whatever. Let look, the government sucks. And I think that's the one thing I really like uh, right now about our country is that we've all lost fucking hope. And what I if we love, took a year and just shut down all the Internet? Oh God, I wouldn't be able to live. Right? How would I? How would I function? How <laughs> what if we, we did be able that? to do this show? No, no. I mean, I know, of course. But what if we did skull. that? What would that do for our generation? I mean, mass suicide. <laughs> I have no idea. I because there's so many things that you use, quote unquote, the internet for. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I, like my father. You know, we do the show on Tuesday. Where I call him on Skype and I record it. And in his mind, he's not online or on the internet until he launches a browser right so like when we're talking on skype he's all okay so you know i'm online as well and i'm like you're online because we're talking on skype like that's how you're online you have to be online you know what i mean yeah and he, he's having a hard time grasping it and I, i'm trying to think of the simplest ways to explain it to him so it's like do you mean because there's so many things what i'm saying is the internet is so far reaching and there's so many things you use it for yeah that ninety uh, percent poor. That you wouldn't but, even, yeah. <laughs> at this point, I feel like it's sort of maybe seventy percent. But uh, okay, there's just so many things that you you know. I work hard, so ninety percent porn. Go ahead. It, 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 <laughs> fucking getting flight information. You know what I mean? They, that's all done. Eighty five percent. You're right. Okay. okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Eighty three. Everything I mentioned. Like okay. Eighty one point two percent. So I don't know. I I just feel like. I just wish we could kind of go back to that where we didn't really talk about it unless some shit went down. That's that's sort of what I like. But what I was saying is I like that there's a lack of hope in America. That sort of any person you talk to yeah. on any side of the political spectrum has something just painfully angry about the government. Like because everyone's an expert. I think no, that it's, uh, it's terrible. Good, though. I think that it's terrible that we have a lack of hope and a lack of faith in our government because it means that when revolution comes, people will be uneducated and ready for whatever form that rev, uh, revolution oh, yeah. takes, even if it's a totalitarian state. We yeah. will be okay with it because we're so fucking unhappy with democracy and we're so unhappy with a black dude as president and Hillary Clinton is such a fucking nasty bitch that there'll have to be some fucking old white geezer telling us exactly what to do in non-specific or specific terms, depending on what it is, Not that we won't want to yeah. vote anymore because it's a fucking hassle and we don't want to hear it on TV all You the are time. looking at the glass half empty or half full, half empty. You're being a cynic and telling me that I'm being a cynic? No, 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 no. I, I'm, you are. The You're lack of, no, 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 no. Hope. The lack of hope is I see as a positive thing. No, it's bad. It's very for bad. you, it's bad. It's I'm very, looking at it's the. It's very bad for everybody. I would rather light a candle than to curse the darkness here. I think that when you look, lighting a there candle are certain, would be proposing a different thing. There are certain problems. <laughs> there are certain situations where lighting a candle is not the same thing as losing hope. That's the opposite of no, losing no, no. hope. There are certain. This is what I'm saying. There are certain situations where people will hold out hope in a hopeless situation, and that's what gets you into trouble. When you're in a hopeless situation and you hold out these weird ounces of hope instead of making a change because you know that it's hopeless. Okay. That's, that's what I'm that's talking fine. about. That's fine. Right. But so what, I, what I'm saying is, is like as somebody who continues along a path and they're like, well, I haven't made it yet, but, but I, I still hold out hope that blank, blank, blank. Whereas instead of holding out hope, they should give up on that and move on and do something, make a change. To, once you've lost that hope, then when you when you reach that hopelessness, that's when you've got nothing to lose. When you got nothing to lose, you're forced to be fucked with. You know what I'm saying? I'm really gonna so enjoy. I'm with, I'm with the idea doing that everybody's your like, non-broadcasted fucking podcast after we are in a totalitarian society because we have all lost hope regarding <laughs> the government I don't, situation. I don't look because I, we're the first taking, people that they'll shut down. Exceedingly, that's that's an exceedingly <laughs> negative viewpoint. But it's true. If you're listening, it's not true. We're not in a totalitarian state. <laughs> not, we're not yet. Right. We're maybe ten years you're, away. No, you're assuming that it's only going to get worse. I'm assuming that people know how bad it is, and the more obvious how bad it is, the more people go, okay, okay, we need to fucking look over this shit and make it better. This okay, is how bad me, it is. We're example. on the air. Give me an example of that in current <laughs> society, of how someone realized that it was bad and tried to make it better. Give me an example. Well, just one example, Mitch. Just one. In current society? Yeah, just one example. You want, like, what, technology example? Anything. Do you want... Any, I give you anything. Somebody said, anything? oh, this is really bad, so I'm going to do something for a positive change that wasn't self-servicing. Oh, I don't care if it's self-servicing. 
Everything is. That doesn't bother me in the least. I'm saying any sort of change where you go like, hey, shit's fucked. Let's, let's, let's do it a slightly different way. Okay, let's give change me an something. example of where that actually happened. You want, I can give you shitloads of technology examples if you want those. Go ahead. Those are super easy. Uh, iPhone comes to mind. There's a shitload oh, of... Oh, the iPhone. Now, I'm not saying they're like, you know, I'm just, as a very quick and easy example, okay. that's a situation where smartphones were, were you know, your Blackberries with the, the keypad thing down here and this tiny little screen, yeah. and it sort of went on this crappy little web browser, and everything looked weird, and everybody had to make a mobile, op- mobile optimized site, and then Apple said, nah, let's go this other route. And now all the phones look and act like that. That's, I'm not saying they weren't self-servicing, so I'm certainly not opposed to that so far as okay. goes. Uh, feminism comes to mind as well. That's a group of people who said, hey, women are being downtrodden, women are being undermined, we're losing power, but when wars come and all the men are away at war, we're taking care of this country. We should be recognized for our contribution. And that's moving, and they've moved that's it forward. That's not current. We have, no, but that's an ongoing thing. That was in thing. the 50s. That's an ongoing thing. I don't think that I'm not saying right support. now that there's, what, you want me to point out to an exact example in society where right at this minute yes. there's a huge cultural shift. Yes. Whereas what I'm saying is that there's a constant cultural shift because you've always got the dinosaurs that are going to be like, I don't like change. I wish I could still own black people and beat my wife and nobody would send me to jail. And so that's an ongoing thing. I think they don't just own black thing. people, now they own everybody. And I think that the iPhone is a perfect example of how they own everybody. Who's owning anybody with that? I'm just, I'm just kind of a Steve goofy Jobs. example, but just a sort of an example of like somebody Suckers. going, I don't like this, and uh, fuck it, we'll go this route with it. You know what I mean? That, that's just, it's, it's, it's a very easy, brief example. But, um, but yeah, con- current society, all these things are... Okay, what about the government? Who's, who's sad about the way the government's working and they're changing it to make it better? Everyone. Who? Oh, come on. Everyone's sad about how the government works And right who's now. changing it to make it better? I feel like everybody, but I don't think we have a fucking no plan of attack. No one's doing anything. Yeah, we don't, don't have a plan of attack. We don't have, attack. Attack. have a plan of attack. And that's the problem. No, I know that. But what I'm saying is that, that plan of attack comes out of losing hope in the current plan. I disagree. Well, okay, I think you can right disagree. now, still we'll people lose list? hope, they turn to religion. Ah, terrible idea. No, yeah, they do. Terrible terrible idea. But they do. I'm not saying they don't. We're not out of that there generation are, yet. There are, we still some have people, that. there are some people well, who, can, who can turn religion into a, into a positive thing for yeah, themselves. Yeah, that's a, agreed, because we can't be out of that generation because most religious ch- churches, most institutions, run the socialist programs in this country. Ooh, ooh, that reminds me. Uh, um, I do have a news article about... Uh, You're right. I'm I always stupid. love articles that, that, that sort of prove there's no God. Um, I, I talked about before, like when TK was on, about how uh, people who, who get prayed for in hospitals die more often than people who aren't being prayed for. Here's a here's a <laughs> nobody dies more often than anybody else. I'm telling you, statistically, the people who Mitch, people, people who are die, everyone's going to do it. People who are in a coma have a higher likelihood of surviving, or or uh, let's say they're they're on their deathbed with cancer. Not so much deathbed, but if they they're stricken with cancer, certain things. The people you have there's a higher rate of survival for people who aren't being prayed for. Well, that guy Steven Seagal in that movie Hard to Kill, <laughs> no one prayed for him. He came back I'm glad you're hard here, as or shit. Mitch and I would be way too serious. He came back hard shit. as shit, guys. Long lifespan linked to poor church <laughs> attendance. I'm is just the telling latest, you. Is the latest study that's been put out by the International Journal of Social Economics has found that um, that that people live longer um, when they when they stop going to church. I wonder Yet why. Yet again, no God. I'm just trying to... they have just money to... instead of... Well, <laughs> they have money left. <laughs> they don't cling to their guns and religion? Is that what you're saying? Well, honey, we had to cut back on the bread and the eggs because I gave it away in the basket. Right, so <laughs> let me put it this way. <laughs> let me put it this to, to you this way. Um, you're taking a, the negative view that not only is shit fucked now, but it's only going to get more fucked, and there's... I guess uh, it sounds like you're implying there's nothing at all we can do about it. No, and you're that's just not true. angry. I, and not that there's nothing at all we can do about it, but that we are busy nothing watching. Nothing that we would do about it. There, we are busy watching South Jersey, Jersey Shore, or whatever, instead right. of deciding how we should change the government. I see. I think there are definitely people that are deciding how we change, should change the government. I'm not saying that we're all paying attention to them right now, but there are definitely people... Every day I get fucking emails because long ago I had a subscription to uh, Salon.com and 
Oh, Ooh. salon.com. So it's like I, I get I get emails four times a day about like, you know, we're, we're you know, sign this petition, check out this thing we're doing and everything else. And I'm not saying it's helping, but at least there's people out there coming up with plans. There are people that are trying to make change. And you can get into the self serving thing, but I don't I don't think that apply I don't think that matters, I guess it's just I think it. that you're right. I think that people are hopeless and it's a hopeless situation and I don't see a lot of change going on. I, I'm I'm down with hopelessness. I'm way into hopelessness because I'm I feel not. like when you when you're hopeless, that's when you make change. Because when you're hopeless, then you've got nothing left to lose because you've exactly. given up hope. You've exactly. gone I, there's nothing I can do with this current situation. It needs a change. It is hopeless. What the problem is that people keep clinging on to a hopeless situation. Can I point out a hopeless population that were ruled by totalita- totalitarian society? Yes. Nazi Germany. Yeah. That's and, how that happened. And it w- and, and we came in and saved them all. Like Jesus. We. <laughs> like you did it. Yeah. I was like, hey, man. I know I won't be born for another fifty we, years. We we waited a good long fucking time before we came and saved everybody. Yeah, I know it was a, it was a crazy time, man. I think crazy we should world. take crazy away all the UStream stuff that we do. I mean, God forbid that they would take away our our show. I would hate that. But what if they did that? What if they took away all of this Who's Twitter? They? No, the government. What if Who's they? Took they? Away? The government's gonna suddenly go. Ah, no more Twitter. Yeah, no assholes. more Twitter. No more Facebook. No more of this uh, you, uh, YouTube. No, they None wouldn't. There's stuff. so much shit on there. They're happy that people are distracting themselves Of course, themselves with exactly. Bullshit. They're distracted. But what if they did? What if they did that? And then everyone would be like, well, all we're hearing is what's going on. Feel like Maybe I we just, should do you something. Know what? I, just, oh. I think that'll like, be after. The I just feel like there are so many people that are like hopped up on doomsday and conspiratorial theories and, and have like this negative mindset. And I just, I'm just like, you know what? Let me be the the bright, shiny center that everybody. Hey, man, we we got a year to go, bro, you. and then we're done. So wait a minute. So you're Big hopeless, but you're come. a bright, shiny center. I, I th- isn't that I, the no, opposite no, no. of hopeless? I said that the current situation, <laughs> the current path, is a hopeless one, and you need okay. and, and and I'm I. You're being find, the center of hope and hopelessness. I find positivity in that hopelessness because that means you drop the shit and you fucking do something new. And I'm excited by that. I'm excited for the future. You're There's excited a lot of, by Nazi Germany? Look, if you watch... You ever watch Cosmos? Carl Sagan's Cosmos? I have, yes. Okay. Do you remember the one where, uh, where he talked about a, uh, a new consciousness arising and things like that? Yes. It's like one of my favorite speeches of all time. Just listen to him talk He's about a new consciousness He's arising. He's a fucking genius. And, and there is... If you look at how things... I'll give you an example. Our friend Teddy Tutson, who came on the show, first episode uh, we had... And um, I showed him a I showed him a photo the other day that I came across, where it was these two black kids, uh, hanging out like on a street corner and stuff, flipping off a guy standing there in a KKK outfit, like ten feet away, and he's all, man, that shit's just going on in broad daylight. I was like, you looking at the bad side? How about? No, I, 50, I mean, I how see about a 50, side 50 of that. years ago? They couldn't do that. Yeah, the, those black kids would have been lynched. They would have never thought. They would have run as fast as they possibly could. There are, there's a lot of change that's happened over the last fucking take a time period. There's a lot of positive change. We've grown so much as people. We've grown so much. In fact, while I'm no vegetarian and I don't particularly care for PETA, I sort of like their. I, I get where they're coming from. But you realize that we are so far evolved mentally that we slowed down stopped and said wait a minute wait a minute we are raping and pillaging this earth we are being not kind to animals not kind to mother earth all these different things we're sitting down and looking over those things and saying we need to change that we need to affect positive change towards that i'm not saying it isn't your (laughs) what i'm saying is (laughs) there was a hopelessness prior to that the hopelessness was Oh, we'll just keep pumping oil until we run out. Well, that's a hopeless thing. So you need a change. Right. What? Alternative energy, right? right. And, and there's so many avenues of alternative energy, and it's so profitable right now to even look into alternative en- energy because there's so many avenues of hope. With and technology. some that are hopeless. Of course, technology as well. And, and because, yeah, the technology that drives this innovation. And what I'm saying is that the, that's signs that, that we as people – we as a human race sit down and go, okay, there's a fucking problem. Let's work towards changing it. There are so many things like that, so many examples of us moving forward as a culture. Sure, but I think to, politically to hopelessness no, will bring us nothing but bad. No, because there's still there was still politics in, in 
integrating schools, making black and white schools. There was politics involved in there. Politics is everything. So politics is social and otherwise. There has been of course. The positive political change. I'm, I might be the only one, but I was really excited when they dropped the don't ask, don't tell policy. I can't believe we sat around on that for as long as we did, but I felt like that started out of somebody going, hey, gays want to get in the military, which is the same thing with gay marriage. I think that all the anti-gay stuff all came out of one uppity dude We're going like, wait a minute. What are we going to do about them fags? And somebody else was like, what are we going to do? And then they, then they, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think you could have just had gay marriage, but somebody was like, wait a minute, what do gay people get to do? And a judge was like, I fucking let them marry? No! You know, it's like, that could have just happened if one uppity person would just shut the fuck up. But now we got to talk about it. So I feel like, for instance, the uh, uh, don't ask, don't tell policy came out of the same mindset where somebody was like, wait a minute! Fags want to shoot guns. And then it was like, just calm down. And then you had to calm that guy down by going, what if you didn't know they were gay? And he was like, well, I guess if I didn't know. And so they were like, all right, so how about we just don't ask anybody, don't tell anybody. That sounded like a compromise kind of thing. But it's been repealed entirely, so it's okay. You can go to the military and be like, I like shooting guns and sucking cocks. You know, and that's fucking wonderful. So I that's agree with you. There's, positive, <laughs> there's positive changes all throughout our history, okay. and it'll only get better. And I'm not saying that there won't be like some fucked up government shit that happens in the interim, or that you know there aren't people working to suppress thought and working to be greedy fuckhead assholes. I'm not saying that. There's definitely plenty of that. Sure. But there are so many people that recognize that and are working to change it, or at least take enough of an issue with it that they'll do something about it. Agreed. But and I that's think those where the positive. Have hope. That's the positive. Change. I think that those people are like me, and they have hope, and people who. Yes. Not you, uh, because I, th I consider you to be a cultural and political anomaly, honestly. I don't think that you would even consider yourself to be culturally or politically or philo philosophically mainstream at all. Would uh, you? I don't know. I don't know what mainstream You're is. You're not common, Mitch. I, I mean, I'm fine. I mean, but I think that I'm the certainly common not trying to not be common, but the, I, I don't really I, know like, what would be mainstream. It doesn't matter what you're trying so to be. I think not. that you're not common. And I think that the That's common fine. person having hopelessness who just fucking sits down and pops open a beer and eats a bag of Doritos oh, in front no, no, of the no, fucking no, no, TV no, 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 no. is hopeless and not going to make a change. You consistently misunderstood my statement. I'm saying the hopelessness in a bad situation, in a situation that should lose hope, when you're on a path that's not working, losing hope in that and taking up hope in something else is good. So, I think we're on the same page, so you but you're harping, a, you're harping on the wrong side of it's this. It's not that. It's that I, I don't advocate hopelessness. I don't. I, I advocate dropping a bad idea. Agreed. That's I what advocate I'm, that's dropping the, a bad that's idea. That's what also. I mean by the hopelessness. I think there's a certain, I think we're reaching a hopelessness with the current situation in the government that is in severe need. In fact, our country as people, there's so many things that we're like, ah, this is fucked, that's fucked. And I think when you drop that, you go, okay, well, let's look over it again. Yes, that's a new hope. <laughs> it's a Star Wars movie. It's a new hope. <laughs> that, that You and that, I are a Star Wars movie I'm right fine, now. I'm fine with that. I'm fine that, with hope. I, I love the hope. Common man I'm getting my hope hopeless. mobile and drive my hope tires. I think that it, the common man being hopeless is bad. Because I think when people are hopeless, they're beaten down morally and emotionally and culturally, and they will take any option that's given to them or any option I that's think, pushed I on them. I also think that we're getting... I think that people have I think a that we're getting of that. Into, I think that we're getting into an argument of semantics, is what it sounds like to me. Because I think that we're talking... Definitely not. We're talking the same thing. We're talking about people we going... We are, but everyone else isn't. Well, and that's I don't, my point. Look, I don't, I don't know or care. And I, this is why I'm saying, like, when you say, I don't think your, your political views are mainstream... I really don't know. I think because that your the people I talk to, common. the people that I talk to, obviously are are you know going to be close to my line of thinking. Sure, almost. Yeah. but if you just look at the regular feed on Twitter, it's complete bullshit. Well, I don't look at that. That's but what I'm saying. I can't there, tell you what they. they I don't vote. know what the mainstream. They vote thinks. and they have a voice in the government and in what will change or what will I'm not, not change. I'm not saying they don't. And I personally, if I was running this ship, I would say, <laughs> look. And, and, I, and I've talked about this before. I would like to make a website that would, would help towards this cause, but I would personally, I would pass a law fucking tomorrow that you got to take a goddamn pre-qual test before you vote. That's what I would do. I'd drop the voting age to 16. I don't 16, agree. I don't agree at and all. And you take a pre-qual test. I don't agree here's at what all. I, here's what I'm going with it. Hear me out on this. 
tell me. Are tell these me, solutions? Tell me how you jive on this joint, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> I've officially riled him up. <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> like you're looking at you're looking at a ballot, right? Your prop one eighteen, prop six two four, it's prop one eight three B, whatever. It's like there's certain props you give major shit about. You fucking super give a shit about, right? Okay. There's gonna be super, super. I'm way passionate about yes. this. And there's other props you're like, I could give a fuck if they put a bar in across the street. I actually don't ever not give a fuck about things personally. Okay. But well, there let's are, there are props that are more important to me than others. Sure, certainly. sure. Well, let's. I'm just saying. I, I. It's, it's difficult for the average, nay, the majority of Americans to be so well informed on a yeah. given topic that they should be voting. So well, what I'm I, saying I agree, is, what I'm saying is, yeah, that's my. So what I'm saying is, if you look over the props and you go, look, there's 15 of these fucking things. I know what six of them are, and I know how I feel. There's nine others I don't fucking know about. Now, you look at, you go, well, I'm a Democrat. I'll vote down Democratic lines, but they don't show you on the prop what's Democrat or Republican. So you have to read this brief description and go, I, quickly, I have an opinion. I just learned about it 30 seconds ago, and now I have an opinion. Click yes. So there's going to be things that pass just because somebody's not in- educated oh, no, no, or this informed is, enough on this. it. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. pre qual test, if you, whatever ones that you got right, it shows that you have a proficient, you understand that question, you get to vote on that. Is it possible that you're more of an elitist than I am? That's impressive. Is that elitist? Yeah, that's okay. very elitist. Fine. Yes. In that case, yeah, I think that if you don't, I think that's terrible. If you don't know or care about a subject, you you don't, shouldn't get to have an opinion on it. You shouldn't have a say. No, no, no. You're allowed to have an opinion, but uh, you shouldn't have a say in how that thing works right. when you don't know about Darth it. Darth Vader. <laughs> that's leading into totalitarianism. You don't think that people should be should be quizzed on what they're voting on? I think that they should be quizzed on what they're voting on, and I think instead of bullshit being propagated on Twitter, that maybe political channels should be more informative so than they currently here's are. So here's my idea. Here's my here's my billion dollar idea. I shouldn't even bring it up on the air because somebody will steal it. But it's my idea. Like fucking prune juice. So so very much like prune tang that um, it's <laughs> unbelievable. No, so here's, here's my here's my idea for a site that I think would help America. And I'm being entirely serious here. Okay. Here's my idea. You get a website which lists all the, let's say, props. Okay. Uh, or a given political issue. Okay. On it. Uh, by state, by city, whatever have you. And then you have the yes and no on that particular issue, whatever okay. it is. Ab- abortion, let's say, okay. right? Pro and con. What you do is you let the community write out a pro or a con, a community of however many people. It doesn't matter if it's millions or a thousand or a hundred. And you let them write it out. And then the community goes and looks at these things and votes up or down the ones that, that support their own cause. So I'm, I'm pro-abortion. Okay. Um, I am pro-choice. I am anti-life. I am... So I would go on there and make this impassioned speech. I would actually just quote Carl Sagan's abortion speech and paste that bitch in there. And the community might go, yes, this is the strongest. This person makes the strongest case for our argument. Amongst all of us, this argument makes the most sense and holds up well for our side. So, yes, this is the strongest. And then over here, the anti-choicers go like, oh, this makes the strongest case that we've ever heard. Are these for this. Democrats? Doesn't matter. Okay. So there, you've got two of the opposing viewpoints, but a community of people has said this. This we we call we say that this is the strongest viewpoint okay. about this given thing on our side. Right. So that you person who goes, I don't know how I feel about abortion, could look at the two strongest arguments for and against. And it. An Do we have lobbyists decision. and make an educated decision? Okay. This would not be a mandated thing. This I'm, is just a fun I'm website. I'm happy to make that site with you. Okay. We'll work on that. Hopeless. That was a, was a hopeless time. motherfucker. See, she keeps taking the hopeless route. Well, I told you. Say, semantics. Oh, well, we'll semantics. There's a lot of ways we it's could do this. That. And they've they've been doing this forever. I'm a happy motherfucker. <laughs> You're picking at me being a happy motherfucker and having like Look at the space program. Like, look, I know that the human race is good. I, I am not one okay. of these people that, that and they're evil. There, well, there is there is definitive proof that people are good. That people are at their base good. Everyone is at their base good. Yeah. There's scientific proof. 
irrefutable proof. Okay. Insofar why? as every time that you that that somebody does something that someone else considers evil. Okay, Locke, but what are you doing about it? <laughs> so you're saying there is talking love. about it on here. You're saying there's Affecting love. Affecting change through opinions. There's you're love. saying people love each other. Yeah, man, lots of he's love. A, he's a lot. I'm not. A, I'm not big on the love thing, but you know. But no, peop- other I, people have it. Not I'm, just I'm, not with, him. I'm, I'm down with people being delusional. I'm way. Co- you know, if it makes them happy. I'm not going to argue anybody's... I love the way you contradict yourself. I'm not talking about constantly. love my girlfriend, for you. love my dog. I'm saying about love and just like caring love, for... Love, baby. Love and that like... Love, baby, love. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I mean, you look at the space program. They, they pick... <laughs> I, I was thinking like... I love the space program. I they, wish it would have never gone away. Oh. It's a damn shame. Uh, one of my friends program. voted for Bush because he loves the space program and we had a great fucking talk about... Why he felt like Bush was the way to go. Do you see what I'm saying? People pick a fucking pick a goddamn cherry off the tree and go. This is the cherry I care about. Right. All the motherfuckers. I don't care how rotten they are. It's cherry. But the space program. Right. So he should not be able to vote on anything else (laughs) except for that. I feel like I don't. I don't feel like that's a terrible idea because I feel like if you went to somebody and you said, "Hey, how do you feel about blank?" and they'd be like, "I don't. What's the issue?" and you explain it to them and they go, "Ah, well." I could kind of, I could go either way. Then you go, do you Can care? Can they sit on it for a while and think about it, or they got to <laughs> vote on it like in five minutes? I'm Mitch, just, if you take away I'm saying, everyone's I'm, I'm not ability taking, I'm to vote, that's the opposite that of democracy. I'm not taking away people's ability. You would to vote. though. No, because here's the here's here's what here's, I get where he's coming. Here's from. how it would go I get down. Where he's coming from. Here's yeah. how here's how it would go down. You know, in advance, there's going to be a pre-qual test before you vote. You're going to try really hard to get motivated and learn about this it's shit. It's deeper than that. So that you... It's deeper than that. So that you, you know can it. vote on this issue that you suddenly give a shit about. It's deeper than like that, and you know about it, and you know it. How, how? I'm trying to think of something you could go either way on. I don't think there is a thing, because you don't have a middle of the road on anything. No, I don't. I'm not a middle of the road girl. How do you feel about that Mitch Hedberg CD in its case right there behind your head? You can see it on the TV, actually, so you don't have to turn around. The what? This this Mitch Hedberg CD in I its case I can't see it. Here. It's tiny. I have to turn around. All right. How do you feel about that? I hate it. Are you for or against it? I You're don't against like it? it? Really? Yeah. Holy shit. I don't know anything about it yet. I have to to to, to if I had to vote That's the it amazing. would have to be on the website that you're never going to build because you're busy being hopeless. Oh, I'm not, tomorrow. I'm not wait, wait till tomorrow. I'm not, <laughs> He's I'm not, stay up I'm not hopeless. He's busy being hopeless, so <laughs> he'll never hopeless. build the informative I am not, website. I'm not a hopeless person. I'm not hopeless on all things. I'm but saying you, no, I'm saying that there is a strength in hopelessness towards bad ideas. That's my point. <laughs> when people hold on to hope in things that should be hopeless, that's where problems arise. Take hope up in something else. Hope is a great thing. I'm I'm way hope. My hope mobile is full of gasoline. <laughs> I drive a bubble bike <laughs> that's glad. fueled by unicorn piss. And I'm glad that I came here and tomorrow. made you hopeful, Mitch. That makes me happy. I, <laughs> I've been hopeful long before. I was hopeful you'd show up and be an entertaining guest, and you have been. <laughs> See, that was not a hopeless cause. I'm not a hopeless cause. That's true. Yeah. I, uh, you, I know you suddenly turned it into like as I if think I you stumped him. I <laughs> suddenly turned, uh, like, wait, you're what? not. <laughs> <laughs> Software reset. I got to reboot. <laughs> Shit. My internal system crashed on me. All right. Well, we've been going for uh, two and a quarter hours. It was a uh, who knows. Did, did you have a good time? Yes. Thank in you. In spite of all the yelling and the screaming. I like yelling and screaming. I'm half Italian, babe. I'm more than half, but yeah. My last name is Marzoni. My, yeah, my dad worked for the mob. Yeah, <laughs> elitist. Yeah, I mean, my <laughs> family worked for the mob too. There you go. It, it happens, man. It's just you it can't get out of it when they you're were Italian. Poor. Yeah, I know. Believe me, it happens. You're Italian, they like you. you yeah, know? you have to get together and yeah, create a mob. It. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> and my mom was a drama teacher, so you know, hey. I come from interesting roots. Hey, yeah, there you it go. Happens, it you all know. works out. All right. Well, uh, you it put was a lot a, of rum in that drink, didn't you? I'm just tired, man. No, I didn't put that much, <laughs> man. I, I know, I'm just tired. <laughs> I feel like I've been relatively articulate. If you think it's that much rum in the drink, I'm, I think uh, you're exceptionally articulate. Well, thank you. You're I'm welcome. not slurring. I think anything. she thinks no. I put all rum. That's the. And she's That's just what just, he said. It does taste that way, but I've been said. drinking it very See, slowly because of that. Yeah, oh. it does taste that way. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. No, I've just been drinking it slow. <laughs> I don't care. 
I used to bartend. Look, I'm just doing this. That's why I used to bartend. You know, to have <laughs> That's a good why time. I used to. I used to yeah, bartend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were like, our profits have gone way down since Justin started working here. Hey, they everyone's happy. Does anyone want to call in and argue with no, us? We seem to have gone through eight bottles of vodka this week. People are very shy. I think everyone's this starting their own movement. Sort of, this, is what, this is what happens on the, on the internet that, that I think is fascinating. It's like YouTube comments are some of the worst comments you will ever see in your oh, life. Yeah, the anonymity allows them to be that right. way. There's the, well, there's, there's two parts to it. There's the anonymity, and then there's the lack of, uh, of consequences. Yeah, let me put it this way. If you go on to a message board on a forum uh, that's been around for a while, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. any forum software will allow you to view every post that's made by a given user. Okay. Right? When a forum has been around for a number of years, the quality of user interaction increases exponentially over time okay. because it behooves one who has, let's say, a thousand posts to not suddenly be a cock because they spent so much time building up this profile to where like, you can look to see how they've, let's say, voted on a given thing um, and, and how they react and how they interact. And so right. if they're a total cock, they don't want to lose that account. They have a thousand posts. Yeah. But they're as anonymous as fuck. It's just a screen name. There's no picture necessarily yeah. sometimes. But sometimes the accountability is there is what you're saying. Yes, the accountability because they have something to lose. So they're not lose. very anonymous But at YouTube all. is like so easy to create. A, uh, first off, it's too easy to create an account on YouTube. And furthermore, there's no... Uh, there's no uh, uh, feeling that you should upload a profile picture either. It's all based on videos. There are millions of accounts on YouTube, and something like the last thing I is seventy percent of them have zero videos. These are just assholes that go on there to comment, mm -hmm. and that creates a community where it doesn't matter if your account gets deleted because right, you you'd make a new nobody one. can find your old comments anyway. Nobody knows who you are. You don't have any videos to lose. Now, me, I, I, YouTube, I've been on YouTube since before they were bought by Google. I was, I was, I was the first uh, when they created a comedy channel on there. Will you be really mad uh, if I go to the bathroom right now? No, no. No, not off. at all. I'll, I'll hold it. I'll hold off. All right, well, don't tell hold Justin. off on my account, but I have to pee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do your thing. Piss away. Well, how, that's why I like Yelp. Thing? Yelp is a similar kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it, accountability. Yeah, it, you, I know. You get, like, all these rewards and shit. Of course. If I lost, like, my YouTube account has, uh, I think, like, 4 million views, something like that on my Good channel. Good God, man. Like a rid Hold on, I'm going to look that up now. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's some ridiculously high number. It's right. something like 4 million views, right. Right? right? And I've got, like, 100 videos. I put, you know, I, you, you see me. I tape every gig I do. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, I'll throw up, like, a little clip. I have 62, I have 62 videos and 3.8 million views, right? Yes. Um, anyway... Uh, yeah, people so leave comments. 3.8 million views. Yeah, people leave. But I don't comment on shit. And I'm also very careful about what I do. I don't upload copyrighted material. I don't try to, for instance, some of my most popular videos, I'm not 100% sure that I could prove to YouTube I have all the rights to, to own them. Right. So um, the videos that could make me the most money, I, I have neglected to try to get money out of them because I'm like, well, it, it has a picture in it that I didn't take. Right. You know, like I snap, you know, whatever. But otherwise, it's all original content. But I don't want, because not only will they not let me, if, if they find out, will they not let me collect money on that video, but they'll also delete that video, which A, takes away views, and B, after three of them, they delete your account. If I lost my YouTube account, I'd be crushed. So I'm very fucking careful about what I do on YouTube because that account means a shitload to me. My MySpace account, I could give a fuck about. Right. You know what I'm saying? My Facebook account, I do care about. My Twitter account, I do care about. So there's a lot of things I won't do on those sites. Not that I, I'm, not, I'm not a dick anyway, as far as that goes. But the average Joe going on the site, yeah, yeah, can do whatever. So the what fuck I'm saying they is, want. like, when okay, you yeah. when when you have a lack of accountability, I don't even think anon anonymity eh, anonymity matters as much as the the accountability. Well, I, could create a... well, I think they feed into each other by what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, 
Exactly. I could create a fake. So email. what I was what I was gonna say <laughs> is, Iran, when it comes to Ustream, people will type into the chat sometimes. You know, gotcha. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. But they know, like I can see it, and I might read it on the air. And there's a there's a level of accountability that now everybody watching from now until when it, you know, we put well, the videos no. up on the site, we put the podcast up. Everybody's gonna know this jack added jackass comment. So did so is calling anyone in saying is the same one. Good? Nobody said anything. Everybody's very quiet. <laughs> I think everybody's like, I don't want to get them. into it. I don't want to get into it. So them. Most you know. people won't talk about politics and religion because they feel like it'll start some sort of argument and they're afraid to argue. They think it's a bad thing. Well, that Did we drink me. all the beer? No. I got more beer. Thanks. Uh, Thanks, bartender. That's, that reminds me of my favorite uh, You're the Man Now dog is the Religion and Politics by, uh, what's his name, Dr. Demento. <laughs> I'll play it for you now. Okay, thanks. It's very good. Actually, I'll wait till I'll wait till Justin gets here. I'll wait till Justin gets here because it's it's rather amusing. I'll wait till he has his headphones on. We're, we're, no rum and coke for me. We're running I over the. At seven in the morning. <laughs> we're running over our time, but it's okay. We're having a good time. All right, so here's the. Uh, do people hold you to the two hour? Like, is it like Dead no. Can Dance, no, where they're like, me. Mitch just went on politics. and it was like a often snooze makes some fest. Some people lose all perspective and give way to ranting and raving and carrying on like emotional children. They either refuse to discuss it with reason, or else they prefer argumentum and hominem, which is a hell of a way to conduct a discussion. Well, anyhow, not long ago, I was talking about the elections and how the campaigns were ignoring the issues and sticking instead to invective and personal crap that had nothing to do with the substantive problems of running a government, which is all true. As you get the idea. I like that. <laughs> yeah, isn't it, Keller? That's good. Religion and politics, uh, all spelled out A-N-D, religionandpolitics.ytmnd.com. You're the man now, dog. Yeah. Now it all comes from a uh, Sean Connery quote from some movie or other uh, where he was like, you're the man now, dog. And, I like uh, Sean Connery. My cat is the Sean Connery of cats. What, is, what does that mean? Wow. He's the Sean Connery of cats. He's got a lot of chest hair. I'll, yes. show, you, I'll show you pictures of him. He's okay. older and statuesque. Oh, yes. right. yes. And speaks with gravity. Uh, <laughs> I see. I got it. Okay. So what do you mean? I was like, meow. You remember Loki? I probably do. He was Julie's cat before he was my cat. Mm. Did you get I only cat really stopped by Julie's place like once or twice, and I was very uncomfortable, so I'd leave. Why were you uncomfortable? I don't know. There was something weird about the... There was a weird vibe. I think this is while she was dating... Well, I won't say his name, but Duder. And she just was like in a weird mood when you'd show up. She was like all on edge and stuff because he might show up or something. I don't remember what it was, but she was just in a very weird, edgy mood where it was mm -hmm. like... You know, like I in my apartments and stuff, I try to create like a chill, comfortable vibe. I always go for like comfy furniture and lighting and things like that. Except for right now because mm -hmm. of the show. Um but, you know, I like a comfy vibe, you know what I mean? Just like, and so I was Are just like. Are you a Scorpio? Like, I am indeed. Um, as if that matters. But. Um, I'm, I think that chill and comfy lighting and comfy seating has something to do with that. It comes from uh, being beat up a lot as a kid and having to create my own environments to be safe and comfortable. Because when I left those environments, bad things happened. So uh, I always tried to create a comfortable vibe for myself and anybody who would enter my abode that's what it comes from i've never heard that attributed to a scorpio thing so it's interesting i know a lot about scorpios i'm gonna take my pants so off you're now. not a lot about like bullshit all right that's good it's good she's taking off pants yeah. i hope there's no nudity under the pants because Ustream will kick us off <laughs> i'm sorry I'm just uh, like i don't care personally oh all right there you go you got a little got a little scorpion on I'm your leg i'm not one i just like them yeah, no, ditto. That's why I have mine. I have this tattoo because I like scorpions. You, I remember, I, I don't know if you remember, I used to keep scorpions as pets. No, I, I would have one now, but I don't know where I'd put the cage. My so. cat would eat it. My cat's not, not like that, thankfully. My cat's really like that. I, I think, actually, I'll need My to, My cats like, are free thinkers. Move those boxes up there, and then I could, put a, I could put a cage there and put scorpions in it. Then I could have scorpions again. I miss them ever so much. They're lovely. They're lovely. They're, they're fascinating, you know, just uh, uh, resilient creatures. Very elitist, those fuckers. And feminist. Mm. The big ones are all girls. And hopeless. I don't know if they're hopeless. I'm totally kidding. I'm just I'm just. Yeah, you're fucking on. with me. I know, exactly. <laughs> well, it's, it's only fair, right? Yeah, I did just fuck with you for like half an hour. Yeah, Probably cool. more than half an hour. Yeah, that's fine. I can take it. Bring it on. Look, if I don't have the strength of my convictions, what am I doing? What am I doing hosting a show, right? Well, if you're not going to make that informative political website, I don't know what you're doing hosting a show. Oh, man. Calling me out of my shit. I actually have, a, I have an idea 
for another website that will actually make me money that I'm working. Or there's two websites that I'm working on that, that will actually make me money. That one is more like a this is what I want to do for the world or for America, sort of like uh, uh, sort of donating my time to them, if you will. Um, but the other two are fun. Make you money and donating and we'll make your time. Money. Oh, the other ones. Yeah, the political one. I mean, I'm sure there's a way to make money off of it, but it doesn't have like a built-in. Um, yeah. Something like the other agree. sites do. The other sites have very much a built-in revenue scheme. It's just a lot of work because uh, it requires kind of more than I know, so I have to like learn as I go. It's a big pain in the ass. Anyway, that's all boring horse shit. No. And I think we're about done here. Anyway, <laughs> what are you feeling? I, I don't. I don't think we're ever done. <clears throat> You drunk I think that's very bastard. astute. Yeah, or are we I think talking about the space program? I'm not done. <laughs> You're not done. All right, well, what we usually do is we stop recording right around the two-hour mark. Let's just keep it going. So that, uh, <laughs> so that we can get into it. We can just be wacky and crazy. No. And then it's not, it's not um, archived for posterity. No, let's and you don't have to worry about what you it. say as uh, much. Let's go back to archive for posterity and salon.com. Okay. Recently covered the fucking asshole in porn who's putting everyone's real name on the internet. Oh. I'm wondering what you think about that. I haven't read Salon in years, but what's hilarious... They just interviewed my friend Kimberly Kane regarding that. It sounds like an asshole, definitely. I do think that... He's undisputedly an asshole, but Salon.com took interest in that I do think that the guy that, is a complete asshole. But look, I, I'm a card-carrying member of the ACLU... Oh, I don't like the ACLU. Look, I didn't mean to be. <laughs> I actually don't like Here's what, them. Like, literally, this is the weirdest thing. I signed up for Salon, and I'm telling you, ever since then, I have been inundated with shit. Like this ACLU card. They sent it to me in the mail. I was like, I, okay. They signed you up? Yeah, they, they signed me up. They decided your political alignment based on your because, website choice? Because, yeah, because I was like, yeah, I'll pay for Salon. And I pretty much only did it because of the personals. And, uh... You know, what personal did you list on Salon.com? I'm very interested well, to Well, Nerve and Salon and a number of other sites used one system. And I was on Nerve, and then I also was on Salon, because they would cross-link each what other a lot. What was your personal ad, Mitch? Answer the question. Fuck, if I remember, man. You would make a great polit uh, politician. I really don't You're remember. You're a question dodger. No, no, no. I. What do you mean? What was my... I mean, I'm, I, have a, I have... You can look at... You I'm said on, you signed up for the site just for the personal. I am on OkCupid. You can look up that profile right now. That's different I can than pull a salon or nerve, isn't it? I mean, OkCupid's kind of a crappy place back in the people. Back in the 90s? We're talking like 98? They didn't have OkCupid in the 90s. No, I know. I'm talking about nerve and salon back in the 90s. Okay, well, what was your profile? What was your personal ad? A nerve or salon. It wasn't like I, an ad. It was a profile. It was like... What was your it profile? It would ask you questions and you'd answer them like on the thing. Like, what? what uh, give a self-summary. What are your favorite books? What was your uh, self-summary? It was like, uh, greatest lie you ever told. And I said, like, by telling you the greatest lie, then I... You, know, I would you have to lying. wonder if, like, yeah. <laughs> it's like we get into this labyrinth situation where it's like... Oh, I love that movie. Oh, such a great... So I could do good. all the voices in that movie. I could talk about that movie forever. Okay, name a character in the movie and I'll do the voice. This is my favorite thing to do. Well, not my favorite thing. Anakin. Well, Jerk it off is way more fun. <laughs> wrong, wrong. <laughs> I'm just Sorry, he wasn't in that movie. You joke. Do it. I'm joking. Did you see Labyrinth? Um, when I was babysitting, or babysat. Whoa. <laughs> great film. Great film. No, no, I have it, I have it. Um, and every time I put it on, I always fall asleep. And not because it's not a great movie. It is a great movie. Look at you. No, no, no. Because like, it, 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 it is. I don't care. You don't like it. You're on the spot right, it, yeah. right now. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, no, it is. It is a great movie. It is. Uh, now I'm just uh, turning Mitch's rage towards you. <laughs> What's that? What rage? I don't have a rage. About that he doesn't know Can we know talk about, about Rocky Oh, or no, I don't. <laughs> I, look, if he doesn't know it or like it, it has no effect. I don't care. It doesn't bother me at all. I'm not. I'm not. I don't judge people. I know what I that. like it. I just don't know it. I did fine. As far as I'm not you know judging it. you based on that, it's fine. Now, if you said the cosmos was a horse, uh, a bunch of horse shit, <laughs> we'd have problems. Mitch, we'd, do we'd have to scrap. We'd have to scrap. Mitch, do do Ludo. <clears throat> Ludo smells bad. So, uh, oh, friend. There we go. Thank you. I'm glad <coughs> that you're living in posterity rather than turning off the feed and living. So on that the I can, so I can have my Ludo impression on there. I I like living so in posterity. Friend, uh, that was why I brought up the Salon.com thing because he puts everyone's real name and that guy is absolutely an asshole. Internet. But what's he's that an asshole, but I absolutely. I'm completely comfortable living in posterity. So now, it, 
that's fine. Now, but what I'm, I'm wondering is what what is where is <laughs> well, how does that affect Salon? I'm curious. Is it because they interviewed him? They picked up, no. Well, yes, they did interview interview him because they picked up that piece of information that they considered to be news. You don't about think that's living news? In posterity. No, I don't. I think it's complete horseshit and bullshit, and he I should mean, be fucking ignored and put in the corner. And popular websites oh, I shouldn't see, I see. highlight it because I they see. should be busy talking about prop so and so and prop so and so. They should be busy talking about that rather than who's putting porn actresses' real names on the fucking internet. I think it's bullshit. That guy deserves no publicity whatsoever. He's a complete piece of shit. I usually come down on that side. I'll come down on that side for this. I'll come down on that side. Don't put a spotlight on the guy. But then the other side of it is, well, you do want to know, like, what's what's he thinking? He's a fucking asshole. How does he fall asleep at night? How does he look at himself in the mirror? Et cetera, et cetera. But then you got to, you know, look, I don't necessarily, the, the, the problem with posting. I mean, they, they were really nice. The they sided with, with the porn stars to, in, in their defense. Of course. Still. Of course. And, and I mean, it's it, the problem is, like, look, you don't post porn girls' real names because um, there's a certain uh, feeling creepy fucks get when they see a bitch fuck on screen where they go, oh, she just likes any dick. Right. And they'll get incredibly obsessive. And, well, you've been to the AVNs. You've been to, you know, have, uh, have, conferences I've, I've, and I've so on and so forth. I've talked to those people who feel yeah. like they can speak to me like I'm a blow-up doll. Exactly. And that and I don't have feelings. And get gropey or whatever. Has. Yeah, right. exactly. It's And and that, therein lies the problem. Point now, if this were... don't super bother me, but being attacked on the internet does. If this were... Uh, Say if 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 the site was the real names of popular movie stars, nobody'd say shit. Sure, because they have enough money to hire lawyers if they get stalkers. But porn people don't have the kind of money that regular celebrities have, and people don't mm. realize that. They think that we all get ten thousand dollars a movie, and that's not true. Sure, I think I, to me, I feel like the the larger issue is the reaction uh, a fan of a movie star. Oh, not just Even that. a psycho. The reaction of you know. if you wanted to leave porn and get a job, let's say at a bank, the reaction that the bank would have to hire you would have to hiring you mm. based on the fact that you did porn. Now, where do you come down on uh, Google's uh, saying that uh, in the future there will be no privacy? Where do you come down on that? I firmly believe that to be true. I do firmly believe that in the future... Well, they're an advocate of it, obviously, with Google yeah, Maps. Yeah, yeah, naturally. Well, I mean, it's more than just that, uh, on a variety right. of levels. Right, but that's, but I think that's a that big, but very popular. It will come to be that there will be nothing that you can hide, and me personally, I, I, I see that as a good thing. I'm fine with but living I feel in public. Like that's why I feel like we should continue taking that's that. Fine. I'm fine it's, we're on posterity. posterity. We're fine. But we're, I'm not, we're archiving I'm, it for posterity. I'm not, I'm not cool with, like you said, uneducated people making judgments. Yeah, that's I, oh, of course, but that's going to happen regardless of I, what I'm saying is that yeah, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. No, no. I, but what I'm saying is, it's like the problem with privacy, generally speaking, is is that of it's like a poker game. Is that if everybody's cards are on the table, all's cool. But if some people's cards aren't on the table, and your cards are on the table, you're like, hey, 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 show me your cards, and they're like, now fuck yourself. So that's that's the that's the problem we're going through right now, where some people's privacy, you know, like I have very little privacy. There's there's very little that I, I don't I talk about or privacy. show or whatever. Have Agreed, you. me too. The one thing I think that that I'm, I, I just don't want the whole world to walk in on me jerking off is really about the only thing, or on the toilet. It was I'm about actually, the only I'm fine things. with both of those things. There's a lot of footage of me doing both on the internet. A lot of footage that I actually published so what myself. So where do you come down? Both. Where where do you come down? Where what's your what's your last thing? The same where they, the where same way that I've always come down on every issue ever is that it's an individual choice. No, no, no. I mean you specifically. Yeah. Where, what is your thing that you're like this is the one privacy I want to keep? I don't have it. If nothing. Well, mm-hmm. clearly where you live, your real name? No, I'm I'm fine with him putting my real name on the internet. I don't care. And where you live. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Well, our archive pro- for prosperity. Go <laughs> ahead and tell everybody your exact address and apartment number and phone number, for that matter. Well, in a perfect world, I would be very happy to publish that information. But if people are assholes, then I'm not interested in it. Okay. They'd it's say sort not of like, to. look. I would say There's I'm a not difference now. between hiding and publishing, Mitch. Well, that's what I'm talking about. I'm saying, like, look, they're, like, 
I I'll I've jerked off on on webcam. I've jerked off four people. You know that's yeah, fine. but that's a dead issue. I mean, there were there have no, been no, phone books for I, a long time. What I'm saying is that <laughs> you could look people up for a very long time. Yeah, they don't publish cell phones anymore because they have to be tied to a physical address. That's how they get them. But uh, the point is, um, uh, or you have to tell them, hey, publish me. But what I'm saying is that Actually, like I'm, I'm there is th- that's what I'm saying is like when it comes to my my paranoia of like oh jerking off or being on the toilet or whatever not that I there's no video of me on the toilet but whatever um, that's just weird that's like if I can choose hurt. if I get to choose who sees that I'm cool you know what I mean I don't want everybody to see it but certain people if they want to see it Rev and I want them Cam to see Frog it. Um, <laughs> go to <laughs> okay. I'll be here's, editing here's, that out here's later. An interesting, <laughs> here's an interesting way that Nick. I and a lot of other porn girls handle the address issue. Is I, I actually do have a published address, and I do have a published phone number that people can call. Mm-hmm. And I pay... So do we. 310, yay, riff. <laughs> exactly. So you, if you want to put out there certain numbers or certain addresses, and people want to publish them, and that's the end of privacy, that's fine. I, I don't agree. I don't I don't go so far as to say that I do think that I like an elective privacy is what we have now, an elective privacy. That's what I'm talking about, where you it's can like, put like out my, a certain my address. My dad is very paranoid. Like, when we started doing the podcast, he was like, look, there's certain people who would not. Like, I don't, I don't want them coming across. I don't want them knowing. So I'm never allowed to say my dad's name on the podcast, even though you could figure it out very easily. But right. never allowed to mention it. And every time he mentions it, I have to call him out the room and go, you said your name twice in this episode. Should I edit that out? And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 edit that out. Okay, fine. Well, I'll, I'll put a beep in there. Or I'll cut it, and you won't even know it was in there. Um, and yet he's elective about his privacy insofar as if you Googled him, there is only one result that I've ever found. And it was like, he wrote a, he wrote a, an op-ed piece for like the New York times or something like that about the government. So that was I it. I think if you Google me, my address would come up as my mailing address and my business phone would come up as my phone number. Right. Right. I don't know. I was just Googling you for pictures to use in the post to, to announce you coming on the show. And I was like, Really, there's not a whole lot of pictures of her on. My online. website comes up first when you Google my name. I know, and and there was uh, that's where I grabbed the picture because I programmed that bitch myself to come up first. Yeah, it's good. See, no one needs you, Mitch. Oh, Just well, kidding. you did put the picture I on the site, care. so <laughs> I did. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, <laughs> so I don't remember her getting in here. Uh, <laughs> Ludo confused. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, yeah. when Julie and I lived together, she was the custodian of records of our mm-hmm. uh, DVDs, yeah. and she she, can, she constantly changed that address. Our though. address was on, and someone showed up at our house and was yelling our stage names outside of really? the building. What the fuck? Did and wow. she was she was really freaked out, and I said, "No, I'll go and talk to the guy. Like, I'm sure he's just a fan." Like. That's creepy. What'd you do? That is creepy. I wasn't there when it happened. She was very freaked out, and she decided we couldn't be the custodian records anymore. And I said, for personal issues, that's probably not such a good idea. But if it does happen again, I'm happy to handle the situation. Yeah. Because I don't think that he was trying to cause us any harm. I think he just wanted to... He was a fan. Yeah. He wanted to see... He wanted to see porn chicks. I don't think it's creepy. I don't think it's creepy at all. I think saying derogatory things about people and having negativity is creepy. But I think just showing up to say hello is not creepy. I get recognized fucking constantly all the time. Uh, I get recognized in the airport by guys who check my ID. They look it down at my ID and they look up at me and they're like, oh. And I'm like, <laughs> hi, it's nice to meet you. That's my ID. That's my address. My parents actually live there. My dad will shoot you if you show up. So don't do that shit. <laughs> It's not a good idea. Note to people out there, very, don't show up at her dad's place. He's very friendly, but not when he first fucking sees people. Okay. Um, and I'm completely okay with that because they're very nice, and they're very kind and very loving people, and I'm nice to them, and they're nice to me. Yeah. And I think if you're nice to people and they're nice to you, then everything is beautiful. And well, then yeah. When some shithead comes up, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm half Sicilian, babe. I'm in favor of execution-style fucking punishment for guys like that. Sure. You're half eggplant. But you know it's it's <laughs> easy to say that while you're still alive because no creepy dudes have showed up to kill you, or anyone that I'm dating, which has happened to sex workers before. Mm-hmm. You consider yourself a sex worker? I do. Okay. How 
would I not consider myself? I don't know. I've heard it go. They, some people call themselves an entertainer instead. I consider say. myself well, a my sex taxes, worker. I'm just underpaid. My yeah, fucking yeah. taxes say entertainer. Dude, hold on. You got this crazy thing going on with your hair, Justin, where this, like, this, this it's fucking... It's pretty good. It passed it, yeah, behind you. Actually, it's like the worm in Labyrinth, Oh, actually, look, it, it just was. got worse. Yeah, it's just killer, dude. Mitch, are you being... Are you asking to be prompted to do the worm voice? No, no, I'm just saying it <laughs> reminds me... I mean, me if you want to do the worm voice, you can, because I'd like to hear it. Hello. You're not going to say the line? Hello. You're not going to say the line? I don't remember it. <laughs> Holy shit. See, now he's mad at me. He wasn't mad at you, but he's mad at me. No. All right, I'll do the whole scene. <clears throat> hello. Did, did you just say hello? No, I said hello. Well, that's close enough. No. <laughs> you like to come inside, have a cup of tea, meet the missus. Hello. I, I'm sorry, but I don't think I'd fit in there. I'm telling you. if you. Oh, See, fact, I remember that part. I'll actually pull that up on YouTube to see if we can oh compare God. how close I was on the worm. I'm 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 pretty sure I got that one really close. <laughs> I'm feeling so good about that one today. Sometimes not so much. <laughs> Justin, I need some ice in this. <laughs> all right, all right. So here, I'll compare. I'll compare the worm. Hello. Hello. Did you say hello? No, I said hello, but that's close enough. Pretty close, right? I think I got it. I think I got that one. Yeah, you were good. Thank you. You're welcome. I told you I could do every voice in the labyrinth. And in fact, I, uh, on, on, oddly enough, on two different occasions, people have asked me to, to record David Bowie as their voicemail, as their uh, voicemail message. Are you now... No, 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 no. I'm David really Bowie, not. I'm really not. I'm really not. I'm not trying to like. Why don't you do David Bowie? I'm not trying to. I'll see do if I can do it. Magic. I will probably fuck it up. <laughs> you remind me of the babe. <laughs> <laughs> what babe? Babe with the paw. What paw? Paw voodoo. Who do? You do. You sound Dance a little magic. more Tim Curry than you do David Bowie. Oh, I could do a little Tim Curry. Hold on. <clears throat> <laughs> we all float down here. There we go. Or uh, Home Alone 2. Hey, you all, your very own limousine and a pizza. <laughs> or, or Clue. Um, no, Sam, just the butler. You're going to edit all this shit I out of the sure fucking that, podcast, aren't you? I make sure the you? kitchen and dining room are in order, and I bottle. That's what I do as the butler. No, not so much. Uh, I'm, I, my David Bowie is, is a bit weak tonight, admittedly. Uh, but normally, I could do... Uh, David Bowie. <clears throat> Too much. Room. I actually watched. I watched Labyrinth on Acid once, and the whole movie became about <laughs> David Bowie's package. Yes. Right. Because so, it's bouncing. So what I did like is as though it were a puppet. It's its own character. It it's is. Got, its own it should character. have an extra. I completely agree with you. It, yeah. It should have an extra credit in the film. I think agreed. he got. It should agreed. get paid at least scale for just being there. Yeah. Uh, agreed. Uh, so in the when I was on acid, I did it, it kind of whole thing where I was watching it with like five different people, where I had turned everybody's voices into. Like, I did all the voices. And stuff. This is how, why I learned all the voices, just for that particular acid trip, where they were all talking about David Bowie's package, and he wanted to bang Sarah. Well, he did. And so he was bang like Sarah. super upset when everybody got in the way because he'd be like, "He was oh. super upset when everyone got in the way." I always, whenever I do the that David happened. Bowie that, labyrinth, that, that wasn't part of the trip. That move, actually happened. I have to the move movie. my hand, like you know, like he's playing with that ball thing. But um, <clears throat> Hoggle, if she asks to see your penis before she sees my package, I will throw you in the ball of eternal stench. It was that kind of thing, you know, where it was those all about were, his those package. Those were the underlying meanings behind what he said. It yeah, really like was, ball. yeah. He's like, I have this giant ball here. These giant balls here. Look, just because I'm playing with this ball up here doesn't mean you can't still stare at my package, Sarah. <laughs> Hoggle, show her my package. We've got entire photos, a gallery of it, in fact, Sarah. You could stay here in the labyrinth forever and never worry about that baby. Just stare at my package, Sarah. It would be so wonderful. You Not do this so every much. week? Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Justin's got to go. All right, well, we got to end this shit <laughs> okay. then. It would be awkward at this point. I think that point. people have heard enough. Yeah, I think they've heard enough. She keeps just making me do labyrinth impressions. <laughs> I promise that was not, that my, my remarks about it were not an invitation. Justin, oh. do you have any gigs coming up? 
Uh, at the moment, I don't. Nor do I. No, I, I've got some. Oh wait, we've got uh, we've got uh, Leo's, Leo's at the end thing. of the month. Is yeah. it the end of this month or is it uh, next month? It's this month. It's the. Oh, okay. It's the last month. Or the, we'll the figure last... it out. We'll figure it out when he it's comes on. It's actually the first. The first of April. Oh. I mean, first of April. Yeah. <laughs> First, yeah. of first of April already passed. First of May. First, first of May. May. Yeah. First of May okay. well, which we'll, is a Sunday. He's coming on. Leo is coming on next week. Yeah. Leo Sanders. We can talk about that. Yeah. Leo that Sanders. Right? Yeah. Leo Sanders is fucking insane. No, he's great. Yeah. And uh, he's it's a school teacher. One of those. I, I, it does make <laughs> you me, like those. It does make me curious because it's like his onstage persona you do, you like those. and his offstage persona are are diametrically opposed. Oh my god! And it does make me wonder if people think the same thing about me, but I have no idea. No. Where it's like his on stage, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. His on stage per- persona is very like aggressive piercing. Aggressive. <laughs> but we know what we're getting into. <laughs> aggressive piercing. His yeah. uh, his on stage per- persona is is very uh, yeah aggressive, but it's it's loud and he's he's exceedingly perverted and like fucked up. And you get the impression that he's just like an angry like hate fucking kind of guy. And he's not. He's so loving. I know. And then no. you talk to him and he like wants to hug you and he's yeah. very nice. I, I can't and wait to get And then it kind of makes you uncomfortable. You're like, like I don't want to send show. my kid to this school. I don't know. I'm curious. Will you watch the show when you're not on the show? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I have watched your shows while I haven't been on them. Woo. That's why I ended up on this show. Word. Sweet. You watched the show way back in the day, Arnold Salvation, yeah. I no? did and I watched the show Dana was on. Ah. Yeah, yeah. So you saw what I was talking about where it was just I was oranges. in the chat room the whole time. Oh, that's right. That's right. I remember that now. Duh. Because yeah. <laughs> you were watching live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey. Uh, yeah, so we'll definitely have to get uh, Kimberly Kane on because I haven't seen her in uh, forever. And it's one of those things where I don't know if she remembers our interview insofar as if I walked up to her when you were like, oh, that's Kimberly Kane. I was like, she doesn't look at all the same. And then I was like, she should, I, should I walk up hair. and be like, hey. But I'm like, what would we talk about other than like I strippers and metal? Once. We were at a strip club watching a metal show, dude. Let me just tell you, it was a bikini, uh, bikini bar kind of thing. Yeah, and these chicks were working. That the wasn't pole. a bikini bar. That was a fucking strip club. There was like a private room in the back. Oh, all right, my bad. Well, there's bikini out front, liquor in the back. Okay. Um, so they, uh, you licked her in the back because it was That's like yeah, it was. Exactly. I like backs. What you got a problem with licking backs? Chicks shave their backs. Not at cool. all. You know, they're not no silverbacks and shit. So, um, Whoa. What? talking about apes. What do I really have to do the sad trombone for that one? What you just do with your mouth? Are you really <laughs> drunk? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, um, yeah, they, they had these like black metal bands up there and these chicks trying to pole dance. And it was like, you could tell they were like, there's no rhythm in black metal. And they were just like, <laughs> they'd grab the pole and swing around it. And you're like, <laughs> And the girls were like, "I don't know what I'm doing." It was awesome. It was it was pretty it was pretty rocking. It was fucking yeah. awesome. Pretty awesome. Just keep doing what you're doing. You have to come out to the next yeah. one. Super it's, awesome. It's right. it's one of those things you have to see. I considered getting video, but I was like, I know it's strip clubs, full on strip clubs. They hate that. But it, when you're just ch- seeing a chick in a bikini, no, yeah. I don't think it's appropriate to tape those girls. I didn't. I just <laughs> I was just like, I want to share this moment with the world. It was just one of those moments that I was like, I wish everybody could see this. I had to tweet it. I'd be like, you guys, watching girls pole dance to black metal is, it's if amazing. you haven't seen it, like it's you need to amazing. see it. Just like <laughs> girls getting up there and they're like, they grab the pole and they're like, oh, there's a band. And they grab it. They're all excited. <laughs> and they're like, I, okay. And the guy was like fucking drooling on himself and being really amazing. Really good. <laughs> yeah. He scared Hi. one of the girls from coming on the stage. It was really good. That's awesome. It's a good time. I think it's coming out. Uh, I think they're doing another one uh, next week or the week after. I think it's the last. Friday, I'm free. Last Thursday. <laughs> yeah. I'm totally free. I don't know when it is, yeah. but I'm free. I have to look it up. I have to look it up. I'm Justin, free that. I'm free Justin, that week. You texted me. Oh, I see. You were telling me you had to go soon. <laughs> <laughs> you texted him and then you told him. Well, that's how he rolls. He thinks I check myself. I don't want to break the. You don't. <clears throat> I was standing on your stoop uh, and somebody else come get me. It was May, May, March 27th, so I guess it was <laughs> so last, last Friday month. every month. Yeah, last Friday every month. So okay, we'll have to, we'll have to so we got some time. Anywho, yeah, I want to get her on here as well at some point. Cause okay. I remember her being a pleasant interview, but I don't remember much about um, it. But I still have it on DVD, so I can give her a copy. So well, there you give go. Her, there's a carrot for her. She's my next-door neighbor. Yeah. You don't live in her butthole, though. No. Does she live in your butthole? No. Okay. 
you're just you're just like this. Well, so you're free I mean, to do whatever you want. Living wise, we <laughs> live like more this. like that. Okay, not so much scissoring. Oh, uh, okay. What not have you so have you got any uh, any uh, any events or things like this that you want to plug? Sure, I am going to be doing a shoot for Kink Live on the twenty second. People can come and hang out in the chat room and oh. talk to us. Kinklive.com. Kinklive.com. On uh, April twenty second. April twenty second. April twenty second. Yeah. Florence and Normandy. That's two and two. All right, all right, good, good stuff. Yeah. So is that a is that a free thing? Do they got to be a member, or what's how's that work? They have to be a member of the site because it's porn. It's explicit, so you have to be. Oh, you get, you get way in there. We get way into some mm. guy's butthole, yes. Fucking just wow, that's <laughs> crazy. Pretty much, yes. Like <laughs> somebody <laughs> pulling apart the butthole. Wow. With a giant dildo, yeah. Uh, can't wait. Kink dot com or what is it? Kink, kink life. Yeah, kink, kink, kink dot life. Com. Uh, I will say, com. when it comes to impressions of uh, accents, <laughs> I was going to say generic accents, but generic. that sounds like I'm making fun of him. And yeah. I, I really mean it in the highest regard. <laughs> Justin rules at that. So I Justin's try. way better at accents I than I am. Do, I try to do some I'm, I'm pretty good at specific characters. He can do accents like... Uh, Maybe. That's his Filipino. No, that's Mexican, man. Oh. That's definitely not <laughs> Filipino. <laughs> the earlier, when you first started, it sounded the like The Filipino is there like we go. this. Okay, like, there we go. Oh, you're going to spread the butt hole, okay. and you're going to go in. This in is why I'm not good at That's still accents. Mexican. No, but you go inside the hole. It's that's like That's still Mexican. No, but because we, we have many people from Spain that come to the Philippines. So when you go into the butt hole, you're going to see some Spanish in the butt anus. And uh, Korean. That's actually a little bit more Middle Eastern, right? Korean. Now. Korean? No, you're not Korean. <laughs> That's, That's oh. Japanese. You got it. You had it on stage. You do a great Korean. <laughs> no, you're not Korean. No, you're not Korean. No. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> you must say, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Don't downplay know. that he's great at accents. She I just she's wildly unimpressed. Wild. That is a really big iPhone. <laughs> I is have a big uh, case on it. Oh, okay. It's got a big case. It's got a big black I, case. I do have a quite <laughs> real quick. Uh, uh, we'll go in a second. Uh, on the kinklive.com, on this live thing, so do people request what they'd like you to see you do, or do they just watch and chat with you? Um, I Both, I think. I mean, I don't know if we'll be paying attention to the request. We might be busy doing Fisting shit. a dude's butthole. Right, but I yeah. think that someone will you be What do you do, elbow deep? You ever reach up and play with their liver a little bit? Never with a dude, mm. only with a girl. Play with the liver? Move things around in there. So do you like it when we don't have any Squeeze the kidney, make them pee. Around the anus area. <laughs> like, just the nice anus? and... Nice is and that a Mexican Scottish person? Oh, that's, that's what it is. Jesus. Oh, wow. She's totally calling me wow. out. Wow. No, Hardcore. really Scottish right now. I don't we know. We should not be archiving this for <laughs> No, just stop it. Wow. <laughs> My God. It's really hard to make her happy. 